high school sports fans. Are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Masbeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. High school sports fans, Varsity Media is the exclusive live stream media partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of soccer, volleyball, field hockey, and football, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. here at Fordham University on the Rose Hill campus of Fordham. The two quarterbacks, Joey Gaston and Rich Phelan, are ready. The Cardinals and the Gales are set. It's the Catholic AAA Championship game, and it's all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Today's AAA Championship game sponsored by Maspeth Federal Savings, as well as Catholic Health. Well, good evening, everyone. Dylan Butler alongside Pat Godfrey for the third and final of the uh, Catholic triple header here uh, at Fordham University. Mount St. Michael, St. John the Baptist, already champions. Uh, but this is the big boy division, the triple A, uh, Iona, and Cardinal Hayes. And you thought for a point of this season, this was going to be a five-horse race, right? Two additions to Iona and Stepanak and St. Anthony's, uh, who were the reigning uh, Catholic and state champions. But uh, lo and behold, as we uh, are here on Championship Saturday night, it does feel like the two best teams uh, are ending this race here in the Catholic League. Absolutely. You know, Cardinal Hayes feels like they should be in this game every single year. It's been a couple-year hiatus since 2019 since they've been in a AAA title game. So looking to get back as a, that championship status. On the flip side, Iona Prep has made a habit of being here the last few years. Last year, really upset about the way that that AAA title game versus St. Anthony's went, looking for that redemption to finish their season as champions. We look at the bracket here and see how these two teams uh, got here as the Throgs Neck Bridge uh, just over uh, the horizon here. And you can see Hayes, what a murderer's row, man. They had to be road warriors along this way. They go to St. Anthony's and they beat the Friars and then they go to Stepanak and they go to White Plains for a second time this year and beat Stepanak. That is championship pedigree, no doubt. And you see in the bottom of your screen, Iona beating Kellenberg and then beating Farrell both of those those games at home. So uh, Hayes, a tougher journey certainly to this game uh, than Iona. Um, but listen, both very much deserving to be here. Yeah, I don't know if you get a tougher path than what Hayes has gone through to get to this AAA title game. First on the road at St. Anthony's in South Huntington, took care of business. Last week they're up in White Plains at Archbishop Stepanak, once again moved along and now looking to finish that title runoff here at Fordham University against Iona Prep. And in many ways, Cardinal Hayes uh, 
uh, is enjoying a little bit of a revenge tour. Forget the Errors Tour, right? This is a revenge tour in the postseason uh, for the Gales uh, because they lost to St. Anthony's in the regular season. So they uh, avenged that one. And then, of course, they go and beat Stepanak as well. And uh, listen, the, the one team that was maybe their worst game of the year, or maybe on the, on the flip side, is, it was Iona's best game, uh, was that regular seeding, season game between the two up in New Rochelle. A 40, uh, a big win there. It was 46-35 was the score uh, that day. Think about this, too. It's remarkable to think about it because Iona came into that game 3-3 three and three, coming off of a rivalry loss to Stepanak, right? So uh, their season w- w- was at a crossroads at that point, and they have a huge win against Hayes. Um, they they then ride that into a five-game winning streak. And, oh, by the way, they return maybe the most fearsome defender in this league from injury in Jalen Hicks. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there's really kind of a come-to-Jesus type moment. They're in the middle of the regular season, sitting at 3-3 three and three and staring down across a, uh, a really difficult opponent in Cardinal Hayes. Iona took care of business the last time that these two teams met up and has used that momentum to go all the way to this AAA title game, now sitting at 8-3, and three, and they're going to look to cap off that magical run here tonight. Now, C.J. O'Neill will be the first to tell you that he wasn't a healthy team in that game. He is now. His uh, linebackers, uh, who will play such a big role in this one, uh, Aldrich uh, Boyaki and Giovanni Downer um, and Abdul Ba, all those guys are healthy now, so that's an important uh, thing here for this matchup. Let's take a look at the players to watch for Cardinal Hayes. Guys, it's gotten a little bit chilly here in the Bronx. On the left side, it's Cleveland Charlton. Has just picked up offers from Towson, Eastern Illinois, and LIU. Uh, listen, 6'5", 175. He gets up and gets it. He's a great target for Rich Beelan. And his brother on the other side of things, Blake Beelan. What a season he has had. 45 tackles, 9 for a loss, and he will be key to try to make Joey Gaston's life miserable here tonight. Yeah, Blake Beelan, one of the preeminent defensive linemen in the Catholic League this year, holds offers from schools such as Maryland, Minnesota, Boston College, just such a dominant athlete out there on the defensive line. And yeah, you mentioned it, Cleveland Charlton, what a weapon on the outside for Richie Beelan. He's six foot five. he goes up, he makes plays over 800 yards on the season, and he's going to be a real difference maker out on the edge for that Hayes offense. Established in 1941, Hayes football. Uh, they are back in the title game, and they are they are in the Bronx. It is a crowd that is still making its way here. There's a line along the boulevard outside here at Fordham of cars still trying to uh, enter. I think the Rams might be jealous of the crowd that we're getting <laughs> here tonight. This is pretty amazing. So Iona, we mentioned their journey here, and two guys who have been instrumental in that journey to another championship appearance on the left side. Look at Stephen Dowdy. What a season he's had. So much talk, rightfully so, of K.J. Duff and, and maybe being the best receiver. But listen, numbers don't lie. Dowdy's made a big season of catching the football. And then, yeah, the big boy's back. Jalen yeah. Hicks, number 11, the Minnesota commit. So you said it. Steve Dowdy, for starters, incredible top-end speed. He was a guy who was banged up a little bit earlier on in the year, but is now really coming and hitting his stride. Two-year starter, and everything kind of goes through him in the passing game for Iona. Now on the flip side, Jalen Hicks, probably the most dominant defensive lineman in New York State right now. He's a Minnesota commit going to play for P.J. Fleck, and he's a guy who's going to have to have himself a big-time night here to walk away as a champion of the AAA division. Jalen Hicks got hurt in the fourth quarter against Bergen Catholic. He returned, and that was what game one, right? Uh, in week zero, returned against Kellenberg. And uh, listen, if you call him the best defensive player in the league, I don't know if you're going to get many to argue with you. So uh, Hicks is back, um, and we'll see what kind of a role he has. Now, one concern a little bit, maybe it's a nitpicky one, but Jalen Hicks hasn't played four really tough quarters of football yet in his return from injury. This will be his first time that he's truly tested, so we'll see um, what that means uh, to Hicks and to the Gales. We'll take a look now at the keys uh, for both of these teams in this one. Again, we had our conversation with both head coaches. And C.J. O'Neill says, listen, no self-inflicted wounds, right? We can't 
uh, hurt ourselves with turnovers or certainly penalties as well. And he said, listen, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag here. Uh, Richie Beelan has got to be Richie Beelan and just let him be that guy who he's been all throughout this postseason and really all throughout the season, but elevating his game in the postseason to uh, just another level. And of course, listen, the Iona offense, man, there's so many receivers, there's so many guys, there's a lot of different looks that Spags gives you, so you want to try to contain that offense. No doubt, Cardinal Hayes going to need to be disciplined out here today. No self-inflicted wounds, and that margin for error is razor thin, considering both these rosters are loaded with talent. Also going to be a, a tough task trying to contain Coach Spagnolo's offense. It does throw so many different looks at you, led by Joey Gaston, their uh, experienced signal caller. You can see one of the keys as the Gales make their way onto the field here. A big ovation from their fan base. Uh, the improv plays, right? Like uh, uh, in, in the rap game, it, it's kind of uh, freestyle, right? Like those guys who could just uh, seemingly out of nothing come up with a great rhyme. And that's kind of the way Rich Beeland plays quarterback, right? It just seems like everything is, is off script. Um, he's been so good at being that guy. And that's, again, when he is at his most dangerous. Yeah, it's almost Johnny Manziel-esque, the way that he can kind of ad lib sometimes back there. So it's going to be really, really important if you're Iona Prep's defense to kind of just continually pursue him, flow to the ball, maintain that contain, and uh, hopefully uh, limit the damage by Richie Bielan, although that's a pretty tall task. So Iona Prep are making their way onto the field. They've got two AAA championships to their name. Their last, just a couple of years ago, in 2021, beating Monsignor Farrell at Mitchell Athletic Complex, a game that we had for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network. There you see the past 10 champions in this league. And then you can see Hayes, just a couple of years behind that, beating Stepanak in the 2019 championship game. Also winning in 16 as well. And Stepanak winning in 15. At that time, Spagnola was the OC at Archbishop Stepanak. And now um, the Iona Prep alum is leading the charge um, for the Gales. Yeah, both these teams over the course of the past 10 years or so have really been dominant here in this AAA division. Iona, the winningest program in the AAA division going back to, I believe, 2018. So both teams used to doing their fair share of winning, both prideful programs, and both close to home with a ton of people out here tonight. So it's going to be interesting to watch these nerves as we get this one kicked off. The Cardinals of Cardinal Hayes are ready, as are the Gales of Iona Prep. It's the Catholic AAA Championship game opening kickoff when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island.
Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. We welcome you back to Fordham University as the anthem has been played and Cardinal Hayes and Iona Prep getting set to go here in the Catholic Triple A championship game. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey up in the booth. We send it down now to the third member of our broadcast team, Jared Veluzzi, on the sideline. Iona Prep and Cardinal Hayes for all the marbles here in the AAA Championship. Both teams peaking at the right time, and for Iona, they're on a five-game winning streak, including knocking off a very good Farrell team in the semifinals, 35-13. to They've been getting it done all over the field here in now their third straight Triple A championship appearance, but for Cardinal Hayes, last season they went two and eight, but now they turned it around here at nine and two and playing for a Triple A championship. They're led by an offense averaging nearly 40 points per game, and now the Cardinals are looking to put a cap on that storybook season with a Triple A title. Back up to you guys. Thanks so much, Jared, and you can see the captains for both teams lined up, including a few. Uh, not in uniform on the Iona side. Some big losses for the Gales. You can see in that huddle uh, before the start of this one. Looks like big Rowan Burns. Yeah, their yeah. left tackle. He's been injured since the Stepanak game, uh, and now you're also without Dan Pauletti. He was injured against Farrell. Uh, so big, two, two big losses on your offensive line for Iona Prep especially considering the tall task they've got on their hands today of trying to block this defensive line from Cardinal Hayes. It's going to be real difficult for those guys filling in. Something to keep an eye on early on. So Cardinal Hayes has won the toss, and they have elected to receive. Last handshake between the captains before this game is set to kick off. They're still trying to get in here at Fordham. Uh, still a line of cars. I'll tell you one thing. They are going to make a mint on parking. That is for <laughs> sure. As the Gales and the Cardinals are set to play. We mentioned before they played in the regular season. That was week six back on October 14th. And a big win for Iona, which certainly uh, changed the course of their season. 46-35, Joey Gaston in that one was 10 of 13 for 137 yards, two touchdowns, had 125 yards on the ground and two scores there as well. Crew Davis had 97 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Caden Hewlin had a touchdown. Dowdy had two touchdowns in defeat. Beelan, maybe his worst game of the season, eight for 25. He did throw for 236 and two touchdowns, but he also threw for an interception. So something to keep an eye out for here tonight. Yeah, you'd have to imagine Rich Bion would be a lot more consistent on the offensive side of the ball this second meeting. Number four, Eli Garcia, and number 28, So here we go. We are set here for the Catholic AAA championship game and the opening kickoff is fielded well in to the end zone so a touchback and the Gales did the job there and Cardinal Hayes will get their offense going from their own 20 led by a guy who has worn the Superman cape all season long look at those total numbers on the year 3,600 total yards and 41 touchdowns. Uh, he has been in beast mode since week zero. Yeah, what's most impressive is we don't break it out here, but he gets it done both through the air and with his legs. Almost 1,200 yards on the ground so far this year with 18 rushing touchdowns.
to couple with about 2,500 passing yards and 23 passing touchdowns. So really just the pinnacle of a dual threat at the quarterback position. Twin receivers on the bottom of your screen, one at the top for Rich Bielan. Fakes the handoff on first down, plenty of protection, rolls out, and now tries to improvise. And a flag thrown on the first play from scrimmage as it appeared to be against Declan McCauley, number 40. A referee, there you see him, with the white hat is Ken Breitenstein. Face mask. He didn't call for the personal foul face mask. He only called for the five yards. And there's an Iona player, player down on the field as well. With that player down, it gives us an opportunity to check out the offense, the starters for Cardinal Hayes and joining Bielan. Kenneth Antoine, what a lead runner he's been. 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns. You've got the receiving tandem or the, or the foursome of Charlton, Garcia, Jones, and Burnham. And up front, it's a line that was young last year, and they are all back from a year ago. Daryl Jenkins, Norris Anderson, Daniel Frazier, Michael Dunn, and Jaden Mann. And that is the offense for Cardinal Hayes and their head coach, C.J. O'Neill. You see him there in the middle of the huddle. Year number 21 as head coach, a 1989 graduate of Mount St. Michael. So he was up here briefly in the booth, was so happy for Mario Valentini, uh, his former coach, uh, a friend, a friendly adversary, if you will. They'll play on Thanksgiving morning. They're frenemies, so to speak. In the, <laughs> in the, in the 80th edition of the Turkey Bowl up there on Murdoch Avenue in the Bronx. And... I'm sure Coach O'Neill would love to have himself the kind of Saturday Coach Valentini had earlier. And if we take a look, that's Jalen Hicks, who was the player being looked at. And he limps off. That is devastating for Iona Prep. Yeah, that's a really scary sign. I mean, he's such a difference maker on the defensive side of the ball, whether it be his maturity level, you know, his strength and twitch. Uh, just really how he impacts the game on every single play. So if you're an Iona Gales fan, got to be holding your breath now, hoping big number 11 feels better in a quick way. And his return from injury, uh, what it did as well was put other guys back in their natural positions. Gabe George was playing strong side DNs, and now he's on the weak side and also was able to maneuver other guys into the right spots. So first and two. And Charlton unable to come up with it. Let's meet the starting defense for Iona Prep. Hicks, Morris, Hunter, and George up front. McCauley, Presley, and Hutnot are your backers. It's Codrington and Johnson at the corners, and Davitt and Nardi at the safety positions. Second and two for Hayes. Bielan cuts it up the middle. Good looking tackle there as well as some extra pushing. But it looked like Victor Hootenot did a really good job getting in there on the blitz. The 220 pound senior from the Bronx playing in front of his hometown faithful out here at Fordham. A really nice play tripping up Bielan. All of a sudden a big third down and one here on this opening possession for Cardinal Hayes. Bielan takes it himself, pushes forward, and he'll get the first down. But there is a flag on the play as well. Personal foul, face mask against Iona. So this game early on, man, it, it, it's got a little bit of physicality here. It's got some nastiness. Yeah, I, I guess you can expect that when you got a uh, near-capacity crowd here at Moglia Stadium and these, these two teams meeting up. But uh, early on, definitely some miscues. And Coach Spags and want to get his guys cleaning up that kind of play. That's a good look at the 
stands here. It only stands on the one side, so uh, you've got to mingle with the other fans. <laughs> and uh, I guess be frenemies, as you mentioned. So first down from near midfield as Bielan. Good protection, goes long, goes deep. It hangs up in the air, and it's caught by Cleveland Charlton. Wow, what a play right here by Cleveland Charlton. Feels like this ball is in the air for about 15 seconds. But big number one does a great job of coming back to it, bailing his QB out and getting underneath this one. It looked like a punt return there for a moment. <laughs> it was so high up in the air. And Bielan gets hit a little bit as he's delivering that one. So perhaps a little shorter than he wanted it, but it doesn't matter when you got number one on the other side. That was just literally one of those who wants it more yep. balls. Jackpot. Right? Two on two, <laughs> and Charlton was like, I am getting that football. Now quick out to that far sideline. Back to Charlton, dives forward. Charlton, the six foot five senior. Didn't have any looks before the start of the year, but it's hard to ignore the size. The 31 receptions for 843 yards and eight touchdowns, and Towson, in Eastern Illinois and LIU certainly took notice. Second Illinois. and eight. And there's Antoine. Get out of the way. Kenneth Antoine. Touchdown, Hayes. Kenneth Antoine running with some absolute passion right here. Bringing the wood. Six foot, 190 pounds, straight out of Harlem. And he's going to lower his shoulder and make sure that Matt Devitt, or sorry, Adane Nardi, from my own prep, feels that one in the morning. Huge run to go out in front, 7-0. See right here, got a nice hole off that perfect read from Richie Bielan, Oof. and then boom, just lowers his shoulder. Nardi's the collateral damage, and that's a 6 nothing Cardinal Hayes lead. So Bielan, he's also your kicker. And the PAT attempt is up and good. The snap was by Ba, and Giovanni Downer was your holder. But Kenneth Antoine, touchdown number 15 on the season. He is a four-year varsity player. The expectation was for him to be the guy this year. And man, has Antoine delivered in a big way. Just the Lockhaven offer right now. But do things like that. That film goes around. Uh, word spreads that you've got a baller here. Absolutely. You see right next to him his older brother, Sean Antoine, who is a great player at Hayes, went on to play at Rhode Island in the CAA. But Kenneth definitely next in that great family at Cardinal Hayes and starting things off in a big way here in this AAA title game. So Bielan will also handle the kickoffs. Kicking off for Cardinal Hayes will be Rich Beeline. It is amazing after, you know, watching all that Richie Bielan can do with the ball in his hands that he's also the kicker for this Hayes team. It's a bouncer that was fielded at about the 22-yard line. An angled run, but not too much on that as the Iona Prep offense will make their way onto the field, led by a first-year starting quarterback. Joey Gaston, listen, he had the credentials coming in, was a starter a year ago for St. Joe's Regional. So he has the big boy experience, and uh, you see his numbers on the year combines just shy of 2,500 yards and 23 touchdowns on the season. Yeah, Joey Gaston came in from St. Joe's Regional with some great experience up in the Big North over in Jersey, and it just translated that perfectly over to Iona Prep's offense. Gales first and 10 from their own 36-yard line. Gaston, great escapability there because the big guys came in. I think it was Bielan or Valentine it was uh, who was in the secondary, but uh, good job just uh, popping and out. Let's meet the, well, actually, hang on. We'll get it after this play as Iona looking to move a little bit quick. A second and six. Oh, and some movements up front. And if you are going to get a penalty for encroachment, that's the way to do it. Yeah, send, <laughs> you just send the message, right? Knock the dude <laughs> over. Yeah, Derek Lopez, a little bit antsy there, trying to get off the ball. Right, that's not one of those, just jump over, try to jump back. No, I'm going all in. 
I'm knocking you on your can. Second and one. Gaston airs it out, comes this side, and that is a completed pass. Steve Dowdy. We mentioned his name in pregame as a big player to watch for this Iona offense and making his presence felt in this op opening possession right down the sideline. Really impressive play by the junior, getting those toes down and keeping things moving. Ball on the 28-yard line of Cardinal Hayes. You see another look at Dowdy, one of the leading receivers in this Catholic league. RPO action, drawing the defense, and then boom, plays perfectly for Dowdy with the toe tap. Gaston, toss right. Oh, but reading it really well. Downer. TFL has Giovanni Downer with a big play. Let's meet the starting offense for Iona Prep. Joining Gaston and Springer, it's Ira Governu, Schillingford, Dowdy and Evans up front. It's the Napoli, Mailspin, Theologius, DeBrasio, and Nicolau. Again, two new starters on that offensive line with those injuries. Uh, of course, to Pauletti, your center, and Burn, your all world left tackle. So, second and 14 for Iona. Gaston, another quick out. And this time found Dowdy again, which brings up a manageable third and about four. Let's meet the Cardinal Hayes defense while we have an opportunity. Let's get through it. Valentine, Lopez, Beelin up front, Ba Downer, Boy Yaki and Smart. It's Rock and Jeffrey at the corners and Boyd and Smith at the safeties. Handoff, look at this run up the middle. First down and more. Pulled down at the one, it's Springer. Kaseem Springer, the senior running back for Iona, gets going right here. And Feels like a perfect answer so far on this drive for my own prep. You know, Hayes came out the gates hot, and they're responding in their own way. Now down to the one-yard line, and look to punch this one in. Handoff again, bouncing it towards the goal line, but it looks like the Hayes defense comes up big with the stop. It was 27, Caden Hewlin with the carry. Caden Euling is kind of their more physical back of the two. He's about 200 pounds, comes in for more short yardage scenarios, but stopped just a little bit short right there. So no gain for Hewlin, which brings up a second and goal from the one. Another handoff, another burst, and it looks like another stop by the Hayes defense. Uh, it's a nice job up front by a couple guys. I saw Kamari Valentine in there. Yeah, Hewlin again, the ball carrier. And all of a sudden, big third down right here for Iona Prep. Got to assert their will against a stout defensive front right there for Cardinal Hayes. Yeah, some big boys up there, Beelin and Valentine, a pair of three-year starters as juniors. You can feel this whole grandstand shaking at Moglia Stadium as the Hayes faithful really get into this. Third and one. Another handoff, another push forward. And that's a touchdown. So third time is the charm for Caden Hewlin. He'll get in for the score. And the Gales are a PAT away from tying this one up. Look, I like Coach Spag sticking to his guns right here. He's going to keep running this one right up the gut, right behind his center, Theologius, who's filling in right now for Paul Letty, and that's a great job of just getting just enough and penning a PAT, tying this one up. It's Sam Bassesi to kick. Julian Guzman is your holder, and Matt Plunkett is your long snapper. That kick is up and good by Bassesi. And we are tied at seven in this AAA championship game. It's going to be great. You don't want to miss it. It's all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. 
Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. How about that? That's a great seat right there, right? You got your bottle. You got another one, right, in case you need some more. You're all bundled up watching the Catholic Championship game. Start them young, right, Dylan? Yeah, maybe you've got the you got a phone there. You can put Varsity Media up and watch the stream. But Caden Hewlin, the sophomore from Cornwall, his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And this is where Bassesi is such a threat, man. They have so many ballers who can return it for Hayes, but they've got to go long field each and every time because Bassesi doesn't just, you know, edge it into the end zone, man. He gets it five yards deep. What a huge advantage at this level and also so hard to find a high school kicker who can consistently get it back for a touchback. But you're 100% right. Neutralizing that kick return unit from Hayes is going to be of paramount importance. So big response from Iona Prep after giving up the first touchdown here in the Bronx. They punch it in from one yard out. Caden Hewlin has tied the score at seven. Hayes from their own 20-yard line. Belin will hand off and look at Antoine burst forward. He is a beast, man. It's funny, you know, uh, C.J. O'Neill goes a little bit old school when you talk about him, but he says he's an Emmett Smith type of runner, man. Just gets downhill straight forward. Has some sharp cuts inside as well. And for those kids at home who don't know, Emmett Smith, probably top two or three greatest running backs of all time, all-time leading rusher in the NFL. So that's pretty high praise coming from Coach O'Neill. You put like Walter Payton in there, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Barry Sanders. There you go. That's a good Jim fearsome Brown. threesome. Oh, Brown, yeah. Yeah. Long Island native. The greatest lacrosse player of all time. Oh, yeah. Manhasset. <laughs> Second and four. Belin. Flushed out and knocked down. It wasn't the first contact it looked like, but it appeared to be the second. Makai Hunter was the first guy in there kind of blowing things up. I think Zakar Morris was the second, number zero. Let's see. Yeah, really nice job. Watch big number 72 just kind of manhandling on the bull rush. A little bit of a trip, yeah. And a, a nice trip. Trip works as good as a tackle. So. Yeah. Micah Hunter from Hopewell Junction. 21 tackles, seven for a loss this year. Spag says a typical sawed-off nose guard. The low center of gravity, third and 11. And Beelin bottled up, up the middle. Once again right there, Micah Hunter, as well as looks like big number 31, Gabe George, 6'6", 250 at a Brewster. Right there, how about that combo getting in? And the best way to neutralize a quarterback like Richie Beelin is getting consistent pressure at his face. So George, as we said, with Hicks's return, at least before this game, right? He was, he moved, he took Hicks's strong side spot, then he went weak side. High snap, Beelin takes it and gets off a nice looking punt. Fielded nearly bobbled at the 50. Dangerous for the Gales. And was that Dowdy? Yeah. Take a look at the year that has been for Iona, and there's a clear point there. There you see the week zero loss at Bergen Catholic, and that's when Jalen Hicks went down. You bounce back, you win at Chaminade, you beat Springfield, a, a big loss at St. Anthony's, and then the wins over Farrell, the loss to Stepanak. So you're 3-3 three and three at that point right there. The win at home against Hayes, and then it's been all wins since for Spags' guys. Yeah, a team that's just clearly hitting their stride at this point in the season. Gaston airs it out, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Ira Govanu. Yeah, Dylan Yorgavano, senior, been on varsity for three years within this program, and usually such a reliable possession guy for them. Unable to reel that one in. 
He makes the trip to New Rochelle every day from Middle Village, Queens. A heck of a trip, but uh, you know what? He's, he wanted to be part of a winning culture, and this is his third straight championship game he's been a part of. So, And, and Theo just the center, goes even further. He's from Long Island City. Wow. <laughs> Second and 10, a lot of moving parts for this Iona offense. Always in motion as Gaston takes it himself, looks for blockers upfield, dances around but never gets forward. It's a good pursuit by the Hazeman, and you saw number 11, Abdul Ba, in on the tackle. Ba in there as well as Zayden Jeffrey. You know, Hayes doing a really good job of flowing five, six hats to the ball, gang tackling. That's really what you got to do when you're playing up against Iona. So this is a third and 10. And it's funny, it has that kind of a feel right now of like, you know, I'll do whatever you do, right? So <laughs> you score, I'll score. Uh, you go three and out, we'll go three and out. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Spags would like to break that trend right yes. here. We shall see. Third and 10 for the Gales. Gaston looked long, now he scrambles. Little stutter step but he has stopped short of that first down marker. Interesting though, Dylan, because uh, he pick, did pick up nine on third and 10. So all of a sudden you're looking at a fourth and one, about the 36 yard line. Gotta feel like Coach Spaggs gonna leave his offense on the field right now. Ba and Boyd in on the tackle for Cardinal Hayes. Yeah, so fourth and a yard. And listen, if you can get the yard at the goal line, you can get the yard here, right? And uh, that's what was the case with Hewlin before. So fourth and one. And going nowhere. Just blown up right there. And first in there is Aiden Smart, number 32 for Cardinal Hayes. The junior who's had 92 tackles on the year, which is just tremendous production at this level. Flies in there and blows up the play <laughs> for the turnover on downs. Got to feel good. And this one kind of doomed from the start. Joey Gaston had a couple people in his face before he was able, even able to pull that RPO. So we'll take another look of that on that one there from the monitors. And a big turnover on downs. Hayes recovers from their own 40-yard line. A minute 30 remaining in this first quarter. Worth noting, looks like big number 11, Jalen Hicks, still out of the game right now. So Iona might, might be going the rest of the way without their best player. Yeah, something we'll monitor throughout this game. I know he has a timeout called by Hayes. Our Jared Veluzzi on the sideline. That's something that we'll try to monitor throughout this one. Obviously, that's a huge storyline. They did well with Hicks out still, but listen, a game changer. Uh, going to Minnesota is Jalen Hicks. So um, we will see what his situation is. And listen, uh, Spags is not shy to say he thinks in five years that's a guy you're going to watch on Sundays. Yeah, I, and I agree with him from everything that I've seen. Jalen Hicks, former Harlem Jet, which is such a great youth program. A lot of these guys come out of. But, uh, yeah, you know, when you're talking about trying to neutralize a quarterback – like Richie Bielan, who's so talented with his legs, it's really so important that you're able to generate a consistent rush getting in his face, and that's just going to be that much harder without your best defensive lineman in the game for Iona. He said Hicks had one job today. Just keep an eye on Bielan. <laughs> so first and 10 for Hayes from their own 40-yard line. Bielan hands off, and Antoine gang tackles and pushed backwards. Bunch of guys in there for Iona. For starters, I saw Declan McCauley flying in, the 6'1", 220-pound senior. You saw Gabe George there at the ends as well. So a loss on the play, second and 12. As we're approaching the final minute now of this first quarter. Beelan drops back. Quick out, goes to the far sideline. That's Eli Garcia, cuts it upfield. Garcia still on his feet. Look at the cuts, and finally pulled down. 
Declan McCall is ultimately going to get him, but Garcia is so slippery. Just got to see what those flags are down on the play. Yeah, there are flags. There is a penalty on the play. There's our referee, Ken Breitenstein. Trying to figure this one out. It does appear to be against Hayes. It'll be a hold. Yeah, this is going to set Cardinal Hayes back in a big way. As they had this screen pretty perfectly set up, it looks like they're going to get number one, Charlton, on the hold. Out on the edge right there. It's so tough to block in, in the open field without grabbing too much. Just got to got to let go. So this would be a third or second and extremely long for, for most offenses, but we've got yeah. Richie Bielan. And that's the amazing thing, right? How many times we say, oh, man, that holding penalty just kills the momentum and it kills what you want to do, and, and it never affects Hayes because of Bielan's ability. So second and 21. Bielan finds his receiver. That's Reed Jones, and he's taken down at about the 40-yard line, making the tackle was Declan McCauley. Interesting to watch the alignment of these defensive backs from Iona. They're giving you know, a good 10 yards of, of kind of cushion to the receivers from Hayes, really concerned about that big play over the top, but just really wondering whether or not they're going to be able to afford to give up these consistent the the over-the-middle kind of short, easier throws. And that's the final play of this first quarter. Cardinal Hayes and Iona Prep tied at 7. You're watching the CHSFL AAA Championship game presented by Maspeth Federal Savings on the Varsity Media Sports Network. This is Solomon Thomas with the New York Jets, and you're watching Varsity Media. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Welcome back to Fordham. Second quarter about to begin. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey up here in the booth. Let's send it down to the field for a little bit more on Joey Gaston. Iona Prep quarterback Joey Gaston went viral earlier in the season as he's the younger brother of rap sensation Ice Spice. But then midseason, he took over on the gridiron. He's been a huge reason why Iona Prep has won five straight games as he's thrown for eight touchdowns to just one interception. It includes a 70% completion percentage in all of those Iona Prep wins. Guys, back over to you. Thanks, Jared. And yeah, listen, uh... Ice Spice has kind of blown up, and Joey Gaston, as a result, has blown up as well because of his older sister and because of what he's done on the football field. Yeah, I think it's a matter of time until Ice Spice is, uh, you know, waiting for Joey to introduce her to people, you know, because I think he's a, he's a stud and a superstar in his own right out here in the Catholic League. The rumors of her singing the national anthem here tonight were uh, just unfounded as Beelin. That's because she's the halftime. Show. You didn't find out? <laughs> I thought it was Chris Harden is, is the halftime show. At least he'll be even on with better, us. Even better. Yes. So listen, no love loss, as you can see. Listen, Iona Prep, they'll say certainly Stepanak is their biggest rival, but uh, Hayes right there as well, right? And when you consider the landscape, all of those teams are all looking for those student athletes, all in the same areas, in Harlem, in the Bronx in New Rochelle and all around those same areas. That's what makes this league so cool is, you know, a lot of these guys grow up playing Little League football against one another. They grow up on the same block. They commute together sometimes. So there really is just kind of another level of competition when these two teams get out there together. Gaston airs it out, looking for Jared Evans, and that one was incomplete. And case in point, Jared Evans from Harlem. Boom. All right, so you've got some Harlem guys on the other side as yeah. well. 
Yeah, that uh, that East Harlem area around East 120th or so, Wagner Park. A lot of great football players being uh, brought up there every single fall. Second and ten for the Gales. Man, there was a lot of movement on that offensive line, so much so that uh, Iona forced to utilize one of their timeouts. Fortunate they didn't get called for an illegal procedure right there because at one point they had a couple couple guys moving when they weren't supposed to. I think Coach Spags feels relieved to be able to get away with a timeout and kind of a reset. In that huddle, Joe Spagnolo in his eighth season as the Gales head coach, a 1998 graduate. Hey, he's a guy back in the day as that gunslinger winning a double-A championship. Went on, played QB at Siena, and Bryant was the assistant head coach and OC for Coach OD at Stepanak. Uh, he lost to Chaminade in the AAA quarters in his senior year. His defensive coordinator, a legend as well, Lou DiRienzo, in his fourth season, a three-time state champion head coach at New Rochelle. Got to be such an advantage having coaches, Coach DiRienzo's experience also on that staff. Another guy who was a very successful head coach for a long time. and Kind of see it in the way that this Iona program conducts themselves. Second and ten. Gaston fakes the handoff, goes to Eric Govenu, breaks the first tackle, and then the second tackle gets him at about the 44-yard line. Making that tackle was Downer, number two. Dylan Yorgavano. Dylan Yorgavano getting going a little bit. He's a senior, had such a good career through the years here at Iona Prep. Yeah, captain as well, high football IQ. It's an intricate offense that... Spagnola likes to run, but he understands the spacing and the concepts inside and out. Third and four for Iona Prep. In motion was Nate Schillingford. Gaston, they get the first down, and then a little bit more as well. Good job on the yards after catch by Dowdy. Nice job by Dowdy here moving the chains, but really what's going to spring this open is a block by number seven right in front of him, Dylan Yorgavanu. Just long enough to get that first down and keep things moving. Here's a good look at Dowdy from the Bronx. So a homecoming of sorts for him. Handoff on first down. Looks to be Crew Davis right there. What a good-looking player. Davis is, too, just a sophomore. Has impacted the game in a big way in, receive, in receiving the ball and also uh, carrying it. It's amazing, too, as Coach Spaggs really compliments his high football IQ. He's a guy only a sophomore in such a complicated offense. A lot of times it can take a while to pick that up, but no issue for Crew Davis. And that's the funny thing, right? When you, when you If you're one of the opponents of Iona, you're like, oh, you know what, fine. Uh, Hicks is gone, Gaston's gone, and Springer is gone. And you're like, oh, hang on. Who are all these sophomores who are going to come back for a couple more years? As Gaston picked off at the 40-yard line. And it's Tyrone Smith for the pick six for Hayes. The junior comes through in a big way. Reads the eyes of Joey Gaston all the way. Steps in front of this ball and takes it back for six. Right here, you'll see this replay. A little bit of a low snap. Might throw off the read. Gaston rushes the throw. Never sees him. And Tyrone Smith is going to take that all the other way with a host of other Hayes defenders. 61 yard. 61 yard touchdown. Wow. What a swing of momentum here at Moglita Stadium. For Tyrone Smith, interception number four of the season. Not to mention three fumble recoveries, so the guy is really just a, a turnover machine for Cardinal Hayes. Beelan, the point after attempt is up, and it is good. So... 
first big play defensively off of a turnover it goes to Hayes with Tyrone Smith going 61 yards to the house for the pick six. There's a lot of speedy guys on this field tonight, uh, but that, my friends, is the Speed Island. Speedy play of the game. Tyrone Smith bringing it defensively, getting the love from the Cardinal as well. Yeah, Tyrone Smith is a guy who actually recovered a fumble for a touchdown last week against Archers of Stepanak. So two weeks in a row for the defensive player getting into the end zone. And boy, that's got to feel good if you're number 16. That's your Speed Island, speedy play of the game. Well deserve it. Located in Garden City, improve your speed today with Onyx Salva and the crew at Speed Island. So 61 yard. Pick six. And now I think if you're Joey Gaston, you got to put some of that great experience you have to good use. You know, you hate what just happened, but at the same time, you got to have a next play mentality, shake it off, and get your offense back on track. So you're saying like a Taylor Swift type mentality. Exactly. Just shake it off. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Short return for Iona Prep. Wearing the, uh, what is that, black and maroon jerseys. Quite a color scheme. Got some passionate fans in the building here today. Moglia Stadium, both sides really getting into it. So the question here for Iona, right, is how do you respond from adversity? And they did so as a team, as we mentioned, three and three, and then they had a great game against Iona, and that was the turning point. So now Gaston throws a pick six. How do you respond? They respond in a good way to get in the end zone to tie the score at seven, and now Gaston uh, trying to get that back. Goes downfield. Fumble! But they'll say that... Looks like Nate Schillingford yeah. on, on that catch. He's 6'4", 215-pound tight end over the middle. They haven't targeted a ton throughout this year. Only two catches going into today, but right there, able to move the chains. A Schillingford from Putnam Valley. More of that physical possession guy, not that speed guy like the others, but he's got that big catch radius. 6'4", 215, first and 10. And you see the guys who motion out from the backfield. Davis, one of those. There goes Gaston. Staying inbounds, cutting it up towards that Iona Prep sideline. And finally forced backwards. You saw in on the tackle. Looked like Corey, Corey Rock. Rock. Yeah, number 20. One thing that's so impressive on this run right here is just Joey Gaston's ability to plant a foot near the sideline and just completely reverse course, almost like a, uh, a juke stick or something like that. Really impressive. The one thing about Cardinal Hayes this year, and we've seen them a few times, especially early in the season against St. Anthony's, is they can score with anybody. We knew that, right, with uh, Beelan and all these guys offensively, but they weren't able to get stops, right? They really struggled on the defensive side, but they got healthy and they became better week in and week out, we've seen a much better defensive effort as Crew Davis pushes the ball towards the 45-yard line from Hayes uh, in the second half and certainly in the playoffs. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Hayes been getting things kind of going on the defensive side of the ball, able to hold Stepanak to only 26 last week, and the week before held that vaunted St. Anthony's offense to only 14 points. And really, Stepanak, some of those were late points kind yeah. of with the game pretty much already uh, decided, and whoa. Valentine coming up big. Gaston was hit late, and that's going to be a, f a penalty roughing the quarterback. Wow, what a change of events right there within about two-second time span. You go from thinking that Cardinal Hayes has a TFL for about a seven-yard loss to all of a sudden Joey Gaston gets roughed and yeah, plus 15. 15 yards the other way. Watch it here coming after right there. Yeah, Kamari Valentine 
Almost killed Crew Davis. <laughs> <laughs> but then the flag came after that. Now it seemed like there was an ineligible man downfield as well for Iona. So perhaps offsetting fouls. So it's first and 10 for the Gales. And it's funny, right? You look at the sideline for Iona, so many guys making hand motions, and uh, it, is a, it is a difficult uh, and complex offense to learn as Gaston moves forward. I'm sure C.J. O'Neill is thinking, where's Jim Harbaugh when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> Not easy to decode everything coming over from that Iona prep sideline. As complicated as it's going to get at the high school level. Second and eight for the Gales. <laughs> End again. <laughs> Derek Lopez on his second encroachment of the afternoon or of the night. And make sure to get the most out of it right there. Looking at a second down and about three yards right here. And just take in all that movement. Yeah, we'll show you. We'll show you after this next play as Gaston uh, just throws it away. Smart play <laughs> by Gaston. I mean, no, just he was under a lot of pressure, right? It looked like he was. The goal was to run. And uh, here you see it again. Look, well, look at how many. This is like well orchestrated here. All wearing the same gloves, right? So we'll call up the play. All right, here we go. All of a sudden, <laughs> that signing <laughs> gets pretty crazy over there. Yeah. Multiple signers for multiple players. Third and three. Oh, and they moved on the bottom of your screen. Jumping that, a full start against the Gales. Looked like uh, one of the receivers got a bit of an early start, kind of reminiscent of the old uh, indoor football days, you know, get that sprint and head start. It doesn't work here in the Catholic League. So those yards that you give up, if you're Hayes with that other uh, penalty, now it comes back the other way. All right, there we go. That's like three different coaches signaling all the plays uh, in unison. Third and eight. Gaston rolls right, nearly pulled back, stays on his feet, gets just inside the 50 before he's gang tackled there. Bunch of Hayes defenders in there, including Abdul Ba on that tackle on Gaston, but Kind of brings up a big decision for Coach Spags. I'd probably expect him to punt here, looking at about fourth and four or so from midfield, but certainly kind of decision time, considering not fun to punt the ball back to Richie Bielan and that offense. Man, it looks like they will go for it here on fourth and four. Maybe try to get hard count. Lined up eight yards back. I bet you Gaston punts this. Oh, but hang on a second. A false start against the offense. And now that trickery goes right out the window. <laughs> now it's a straight up punt by Sam Bassesi. And the straight up punt is not nearly as fun because that means that you got to kick it back to that Hayes return man, I think, right now. Who's that? Looks like Eli Garcia back there. We've seen him do a little bit of Reggie Bush impressions early on. It's a dangerous return man for Hayes. Long snapper Matt Plunkett. An angled kick and a good one, which will make its way out at about the 24-yard line. A rich footballing history for Cardinal Hayes, certainly, and... Uh, we know their longtime rivalry, of course, with Mount St. Michael and 
Uh, there you see, first season of football, 1941. How about this? You've won at each level at Cardinal Hayes. Also, CJ will tell you he's lost at each level <laughs> in the championship game, in the A, AA, and AAA. Uh, Willie Colon winning a Super Bowl uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. In their last title, you go to 8, 2019, beating Stepanak in the AAA championship game. And that is CJ O'Neill hoisting that trophy over his head. If you talk to anybody who graduated from Cardinal Hayes, they'll let you know how, how much it means to be a Hayesman. That's a title those guys carry with them for the rest of their lives. So, Beelan looks long, looking for Charlton. And it's actually nearly intercepted. Yeah, right there, Declan McCauley. Got to really admire that a linebacker who can drop back in one-on-one -on -one coverage against Cleveland Charlton. But McCauley's a guy in his own right who runs 22 miles an hour, which is just about as fast as you'll ever hear of at the high school level. Oftentimes you can't even drive 22 miles an hour on the Cross Bronx Expressway. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have McCauley on the side of the road. Exactly, just, just sprinting Powering right down it. in the HOV lane. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of speed on this Iona defense. Teron Johnson at the bottom of your screen, number three. Another uh, all-state track guy. He actually timed at my recruiting showcase this past summer in Lincoln and Brooklyn as the fastest in New York City. Antoine. He might not necessarily be the burner, but uh, he's that tough yards guy. He's running between the tackles and running you over. Kind of like Emmett Smith, he's a runner who gets more effective as the game goes on. Yeah, the it makes more, the defense pay. Exactly, the more you punish, right? The defense, the more they maybe aren't looking to tackle you the next time. <laughs> All of a sudden that willingness starts to go down yeah. a little bit. Third and seven for Hayes, and uh, the Cardinals will call a timeout. So Hayes with one timeout remaining in this first half. With 3.45 remaining, we showed you Cardinal Hayes in their football history. Let's take a look at what the Gales have been able to do over time. 1931 was their first year of football, but they joined the Catholic League in 1954. Look at all those championships, multiple levels as well, like Cardinal Hayes. Two in the AAA, two in the AA, one back in the A. Most wins in this league since 2016. And how about that? That's to the, the, the bottom two, man, that's how you build a program. Uh, you get the wins, and also you send 52 different players currently playing at multiple levels of college football. So impressive, especially thinking, you know, about the fact that there's other guys who went on to play other sports in college, probably talking 60, 70 Iona Gale alumni now playing some sort of sport at the next level, and that kind of just speaks to the kind of development that Coach Spaggs does while he has those guys for four years in New Rochelle. Third and seven. For Hayes. Garcia in motion. Beelan rounds the corner. What a fake by Beelan as well, avoiding that first tackle and getting out of bounds near midfield. Moving the chains. Yeah, it's a really nice job here by Beelan, kind of just giving Brennan Presley that stutter step in the open field and then cutting to the sideline. Not easy to move the sticks in a scenario like this. He's got George hot on his pursuit, looks inward quickly, and then boom, cuts outside. Breaking ankles, Richie Beelan, and breaking tackles is Kenneth Antoine as he gets out to the 45-yard line. Yeah, Again, no, moving the chains. No question, Kenneth Antoine is a grown man every time he touches the ball. By the way, just to continue that from last year alone for Iona, we've got a Johnny Shepard at Rutgers, Colin O'Gara at Dartmouth, Thomas Schultz Langendorf at Trinity, George Ruiz at Georgetown, Capri Martin at Villanova, and Zion Moultrie Goddard at Syracuse. Antoine again. Another nice play by Micah Hunter. We called his name a couple times earlier on here today, but the 270-pound junior just keeps making his presence felt on the inside. Big props to him for kind of filling that, that void left by big number 11. 
Uh, Jalen Hicks played the first play of the game, has not returned since. We will endeavor to maybe get some more about his status from head coach Joe Spagnola, perhaps when he comes out of halftime and is able to speak with our Jared Veluzzi. Second and nine. Beelan will air it out, looking to go to Charlton. There's a lot of contact, and there is a flag. In coverage, you mentioned him a moment ago, it was Johnson. Yeah, this is really a good on good scenario here to Ron Johnson, a guy with various different power five offers in his own right. But when you're going up against a guy like Cleveland Charlton, one on one with no help over the top, Charlton's just gonna use that six foot five size all day and Teron Johnson is just gonna to resort to getting a little extra physical and grabbing there. Yeah, you see that, that little hook is what got him. Uh, so this will move the ball inside the 30 yard line with 2.15 left in this first half. The way the first quarter started, you figured, oh man, we are in for like a 49-45 game, but the defense for both teams have come in and played really well. But there goes Beelan. Fumbles the football, Iona recovers. Wow, what a play. And Frank Michelli, the senior, 5'10", 200 pound linebacker from Iona at a New Rochelle, dives on that one. And what a play, he's more of a reserve backer in there. Looks like this one's gonna get stripped by, uh, looks like Nardi with the strip, and then boom, Michelli comes in in a big way, recovers that one, and now it's just a swing of momentum that Iona needed, as it looked like Hayes was poised to go up by two scores. Yeah, Nardi strips it, as you mentioned. Michelli recovers, and a rare fumble by Rich Bielan. So Iona takes over but they do so from their own two yard line. So that's the glass, glass half full aspect, right? If you're Cardinal Hayes. Wow, what or maybe nuts. not, so look at this move <laughs> down the far sideline. What a gutsy play call coming out of your own end zone right there from Coach Spagnolo. Everybody on earth is expecting this to be a simple little A-gap dive. Give yourself a little bit of breathing room. Instead, he risks it. Hands it off behind that goal line to Steve Dowdy, and it pays off in a big way to get some breathing room. Yeah, if you if you know Joe Spagnuolo even a little bit, if you've watched any of his games, uh, he is not uh, what you would call conservative in his play calling. Uh, he likes to go for it. No room for conservatism on Championship Saturday. No, and there are flags galore here. Another false start against the Gales. Going into this game, we kind of talked about the importance for Iona of avoiding those self-inflicted mistakes. Yet another costly one here. And when you got less than two minutes trying to drive down and tie this one up before half, the last thing you need is a false start. So that'll push Iona Prep back to their own 16-yard line. Gaston surveys the field, rolls right, finds a receiver in Jared Evans, and Evans makes his way up this near sideline. Evans, another Harlem native with that swing pass right there. Undersized guy who just understands the scheme so well, so reliable out there for Joey Gaston. Able to pick up, looks like six on that first down. Or sorry, 10. And often this year, Evans and Davis have been the pitchbacks in what's become kind of a triple option offense for Spagnolo. Second and three. Gaston tucks it under, runs towards the sideline, angles himself out of bounds, so he'll get the first down and some more smart play from the senior from the Bronx. Yeah, one thing Joey Gasson has, just that kind of turbo whenever he does get to op the open field. So they're really heads up play, knowing where they are in terms of the clock, 
and making sure to get out of bounds, save his team a timeout. So first down for Hayes, oh, excuse me, for Iona. And you're not getting out of the big mitts of 99, Kamari Valentine. Kamari Valentine mentioned his name a couple times tonight. The big boy, <laughs> 315 pounds, out of Harlem, makes plays all day long. Such an impressive guy. And once he gets a hand on Joey Gasson, he's just like, forget about it, buddy. Come on. It was like he was playing with a little boy. <laughs> oh, like, you thought you were going to get away. That's, get back here. That's funny. <laughs> Second and 15. Gaston airs it out near, near sideline. Good tackle applied. It was Dowdy with the reception and the tackle by Zayden Jeffrey. Yeah, Zayden Jeffrey, a guy who played a lot of wide receiver last year, more so making his presence felt on the defensive side of the ball this season. Doing a great job covering. Nice now, play right there. Iona will get the ball coming out after Hayes won the toss and elected to receive to start the game. Yeah, so it looks like Coach Spag's going to be okay with going in at halftime with a 14-7 deficit. Gaston over the middle, and that's complete as well. That will stop the clock and move the chains. Finding Eric Avenue. And a timeout for Iona. 14 seconds remaining, and you know, you're not quite there yet, obviously. Um, but remember, you've got a special, special kicker in Bassesi as well. Yeah, to me, if I'm Coach Spags, I'm running a couple plays back to back, called towards the sideline. Or actually, you got a timeout, so you can even run over the middle of the field. But try and pick up another 15, 20 yards to potentially put Bassesi in range or set up a Joey Gaston Hail Mary attempt. Bassesi, 7 of 8 for field goals, his long this year, 40. So he's got the range. But to, for, to kick a 40-yarder, you've got to get to the 30-yard uh, line, right? Plus 10? Or the 23 or so, because you've got to remember you're uh, going to go behind. It's that 17-yard okay. delta. Still. We're, we're more so football guys and math guys for everybody at home. That but is true. Uh, they, they need to pick up some more yards without a doubt. Yeah, that's the bottom line. <laughs> Gaston, a guy with a good arm, but not a great arm, so they probably need to get, I'd say, to the 35, 30 or so to give him a chance of reaching the end zone with a Hail Mary. And you see they have one timeout remaining as well uh, to maybe set something up late. Gaston over the middle, finds a receiver, and now you are inside of the 30-yard line. The catch made by Rocco Presto. So that's pretty much exactly what... You were looking for right there out of this Iona offense. Now all of a sudden you give yourself some good options from about the 27-yard line. As you'll see, great delivery by Joey Gaston hitting his receiver up the seam. And that's been one of the most impressive things, I think, this year of Iona Prep is, you know, we, we've got our starting guys, and they obviously get a lot of touches, but um, you go down the depth chart and everyone is involved, right? Everyone eats on this Iona offense, and that's the first time you mentioned Preston's, uh, R Rocco Presto's name. Uh, Hewlin has done a great job as well. Crew Davis, uh, Presley at times, uh, has seen time on the offense as well. Obviously better, uh, more impactful as a middle linebacker, but that's the point. It's hard to defend against a team that uses so many different players and puts them in so many different places. No doubt, yeah. They're constantly moving around pre-snap, really hard to, uh, to make calls on the defensive side of the ball. And now it looks like Iona is going to line up and try and heave one towards the end zone. So here we go. First and 10, nine seconds left. No timeouts remaining for the Gales. And again, going nowhere. And this time it's Blake Bielan. Number six, a huge sack at the end of this second quarter. Looks like Aiden Smart is laying out hurt. Right now, let's hope he's okay, but that's a huge stop to finish off that first half by Cardinal Hayes, and Coach C.J. O'Neill is going to be pumped going into halftime, the 14-7 lead. Yeah, both Valentine 
and Beelin have made some big plays defensively. And of course, you got the pick six as well. So uh, you're getting the job done defensively, no doubt, for Cardinal Hayes. They have a 14-7 lead here at the break. Hayes came out with a lot of emotion to start this game and really did a good job kind of harnessing that for good. Playing physical football, their style out here in the Bronx. Then on the flip side, Iona Prep, they're you know, right where they need to be in great position, getting the ball to open up the second half to try and tie this one up. And of course, uh, also down Jalen Hicks as well. We'll send it down to field level where Jared Valuzzi has C.J. O'Neill with him. Coach, your offense has been moving the ball pretty well so far, 14 points in the first half. What can we expect in half number two? This is a great ball game. You know, they, they're such a, a well-coached team. We just got to keep trying to get the ball down the field and, and play mistake-free football. That's our big problem right now. And your defense has been all over the place, making a lot of plays. What did you like from them in the first half? They're playing their hearts out right now. You know, they're playing for a championship against a quality opponent, and, you know, that's uh, what you expect from them. Proud of them. Thank you for your time, Coach. Back up. Thanks, Jared. Maybe that's more important right now, right? A little uh, kiss to his uh, young daughter, certainly for C.J. O'Neill. Uh, that's Charlotte Ann, who was born last August. And now he'll go into halftime to speak with his guys with a seven-point lead. Yeah, you know, Coach O'Neill has his priorities straight, obviously, but I think for the time being, the next hour or two, his priority is walking off this field tonight with a triple-A title game. He got his team going to half in pole position. So Cardinal Hayes, a seven-point lead at the break. You're watching the Catholic AAA Championship game presented by Massmith Federal Savings right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Massmith Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Massmith has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. Halftime here at Fordham University in the AAA championship game. It's Cardinal Hayes with a 14-7 lead over Iona Prep. We welcome you inside the press box. Dylan Butler along with the president of the Catholic High School Football League, Chris Hardett. Um, for a little bit, we kind of do this now. It feels like on an annual basis, a little bit of the state of the union uh, of the league. Um, but I've got to say, Chris, to, to start off, you know, what great storylines that we've seen here already 
um, in the three championship games. And, of course, it starts in the early one. Um, a, a man that you've, you've known for such a long time, Mario Valentini. Um, it felt like the best way for him to go out was to win um, that championship game. Now, of course, Kevin Fontaine and Zavarian had other thoughts, but um, what a win uh, and what a few moments. He was able to share it with his, with his players, with his former players, with his family. Uh, uh, it could not have gone better um, for a guy who spent more than four decades in this league. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's what our league is all about, you know. And, uh, you know, like you said, 44 years at Mount St. Michael and 40 years as the head coach. Um, what a legacy um, that he left behind. And, um, and he's, just, he's just a wonderful human being, like you said. And uh, it was great. His little grandson came up to me. I was standing there with the trophy. And he said, hey, could I give that to Grandpa? You know, so I said, yeah, no doubt. You can go after, after this is over. <laughs> but, but, no, actually, I mean, just, uh, you know, Mary, it's just, it was wonderful to see and uh, a great, great, great way for him to go out. Of course, he still has one more game to be played, uh, the Turkey Bowl, the 80th edition of that one up in Murdoch Avenue, one of the better, uh, one of the best traditions, certainly uh, not only in this league, but really in the tri-state. The 100th edition of this Turkey Bowl here uh, with Fordham Prep and, and Xavier, a game that will be on the S Network. So uh, some big, important games still to be played. Of course, uh, this one, the AAA Championship, which uh, has been as advertised to Niona and Hayes, um, has been really good as well. So, I mean, if, you, if you're looking from a, from a league perspective at, at kind of trying to showcase how good this league is, um, this is a great representation tonight. Absolutely. And you know what, Dylan, like, like, we, like we said, so, so how many years now you guys have been doing this, but um, I've been at the, the CHSFL Triple Headed Championship. I think I've been at every one since 1989. <laughs> so, but every year it's, it's a showcase of our league, you know, and the three games, the three, the three different levels, um, it's it's just it's great football tonight. Like we just said before we came on, I mean the number of Division One athletes that are running around on this field tonight um, is just unbelievable. And and the, the caliber of play and the level of play and the, and the coaching that goes on, it's 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 that's that's what makes our league so great. But then also you get a venue change, right? It, it, it's it's been uh, at Mitchell Athletic Complex the last few years as well. But to have it here at Fordham, all three of the games. A terrific backdrop, right? A, a picturesque campus here at Rose Hill um, and a college football facility uh, to boot and a huge crowd here for the AAA championship. Right. We, we, you know, we're pretty flexible. We have to be flexible with that because it's, uh, you know, we have uh, the geographical makeup of our league, right? So when the game is going to be Iona against Hayes or Stepanak against Hayes or whatever, you know, it just makes perfect sense to come here on Rose Hill and play here. And unfortunately, we can't really do it every year because – Fordham still playing, you know, yeah. and uh, they're, it's kind of like every other year it feels like, like this year there, I believe they were up in, uh, they played somewhere today, but whatever, and um, they're away today, so we were able to access the facility, you know. So. One, one thing that we mentioned too during the, during one of our broadcasts here today was, you know, it feels like there's not a big difference between the three levels, you know, and, and, and there's, there's, there's interplay a little bit there between, you know, you've got double-A-1 teams playing triple-A teams and winning those games. You've got double-A-2 teams playing double-A-1 teams and winning those games. You know, so from top to the bottom in this league, you know, obviously from, from the top to the very bottom, there'll be a separation. But somewhere in that middle, um, there's hugely competitive games. Well, that's what, that's what we've done the last few years. And, and we'll go back to the drawing board again, you know, two weeks from now, like we always do, and see what's good and what's bad and what we can do to tweak the league a little bit, whatever, we, like we've talked about a million times. And we'll do that again. And, but, but for the last couple of years, this system, I, I agree with you, it's actually given – um, teams an opportunity to take a shot and play at a higher level, and some of the some of the higher teams go down and play. You know, you know, play it gives everybody an opportunity to see where that program could be and where it could go. You know, um, for example, you know, like a like a St. John the Baptist, they played some AAA teams this year and they won won the AA one championship. But playing those games and more Catholic played a couple of those games, so it, it actually has helped their program. You know, um, so that's what we're trying to do. Again, that's what we're trying to do with our league always try to kind of stay ahead of the curve and do the best we can to get the best competition we can. That's and, la and, and lastly, too, we saw these games at the beginning of the season, that battle of the bridge and, and more wins coming for the Catholic right. Football League. Obviously, St. Anthony's win uh, over against a, a really good St. Joe's team, you know, maybe the biggest, but Stepanek a big win uh, as well. So I, I think it, again, 
uh, proves the point that you've known for a very long time. There's high quality football um, right here on this side of the bridge. Right, and uh, we're going to you know hope to continue that whole uh, battle of the bridge thing, and and uh, actually. The idea this year is to expand it, you know, and to even put more teams. Like this year, I believe we had nine games, um, but we're going to try to, you know, we really want to try to do it up and down the league where we can get everybody a game. You know, that, that's what we're really trying to do, which would be great for the state, great for both, both New Jersey and us, you know, so. See, we did this whole State of the Union. I didn't ask you once about who's going to move up or who should move up to the AAA. No, no, no. Let's See? not talk about that. <laughs> no, no, we, I'll let you know in a couple weeks. There we go. <laughs> That's Chris Harden, <laughs> the president of the Catholic High School Football League. It is halftime here at Fordham. Terrific scenes here as Cardinal Hayes with a 14-7 lead. We'll come right back. We'll get some halftime highlights for you right here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. 
Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Hey, sports fans. Did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050 or email Ben at varsitymedia.net. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life and now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Hey, sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050 
or email ben at varsitymedia.net. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. We're back here at Moglia Stadium on the campus of Fordham University. Halftime here between Cardinal Hayes and Iona Prep. And it's the Hayesmen with a 14-7 lead at the break of this, the AAA championship game. Perhaps a little more low scoring than we thought, but uh, Pat, it got cooking early, right? We thought, you know, first drive, first score. Uh, here we go. Yeah, emotions were running high from the jump. Couple of face masks on that first drive for Iona Prep. On the way to Kenneth Antoine with an absolutely physical run, mashing through the Iona Prep defender and coming in to open this game off with a 7-0 lead for Cardinal Hayes. Really setting the tone here in the Bronx. That was, that was a great sign for any Cardinal Hayes faithful. But then the response, which was a necessary response, came immediately next drive Iona prep they got stopped twice at the goal line but Caden Hewlin would not be denied a third time absolutely just some hard-nosed football three straight plays right up the gut that one Hewlin able to get in to bring it to a 7-7 ball game and it's been a first half about the defense and what a play defensively that Tyrone Smith makes right here 61 yard interception return for the touchdown yeah, that's a difference in your ball game right here. Joey Gaston just kind of staring down his receiver and taken all the way back by Tyrone Smith for the touchdown. He's a guy who had a, a fumble return for a touchdown versus Stepanak last week, follows it up with that, and that's a difference in your ball game. 14-7 Hayes entering this third quarter. Beelin kicks off to start the second half. It's fielded on that far side, and look at this big return up that far sideline. That's just what... Iona Prep wanted to come out of halftime. A big return just outside the Cardinal Hayes 40. Yeah, really nice play there. Looked like a Dante Nardi with that big return. The senior setting the tone coming out the gates, and he's going to give Joey Gasson and company great field position as they look to tie this one up to start this third quarter. So Iona Prep starts their first drive of the second half from the Cardinal Hayes 41-yard line. See Jaden Nicolau shifting over the left tackle spot. Gaston tucks it under. Look at Joey Gaston 
still on his feet. How did he stay up? Touchdown, Iota Prep. Joey Gaston, are you kidding me? Right here, he might be known as Ice Spice's little brother, but I want you to know him as one of the most dominant runners in the AAA division this year. This is a ridiculous play. He's just gonna foul his blocking right up the gut on the draw. Find a really nice crease, and just when you think you've got him down, sorry, hits that circle button, keeps his feet, and Joey Gaston ties this one up in a hurry, pending this PAT. There's an injured Cardinal Hayes player down at about the 26 yard line. That's why the PAT is being held up, but it was Gaston's ninth rushing touchdown of the year, a six, uh, 41 yard TD score. And that's kind of exactly what you're looking for out of your senior quarterback in that moment in the game. Joey Gaston, a guy who had starting experience coming into this year at St. Joe's Regional, transfers over to Iona Prep for moments like this. And boy, what a way to start off that third quarter if you're an Iona Gales fan. And the injured player is up and being helped off. Looks like it's Tyrone Smith. And it was Smith who had that pick six that we just showed you the highlight of. Yeah, Smith responsible for seven takeaways for that Cardinal defense this year. So definitely a guy that C.J. O'Neill is going to want to have back in short order. So Sam Bassesi on for the kick. Matt Plunkett is your long snapper. And Julian, Julian Guzman is your holder. Snap is high, the kick is up, and it is good. So yes, that's exactly what Iona had dialed, wanted dialed up to start this second half. We're looking for some information for you guys on the status of Jalen Hicks at halftime. Unfortunately, no updates as of now that our team can report but definitely uh, a big storyline as this game goes on. Yeah, Jalen Hicks, <clears throat> to repeat, was injured, suffered a foot injury in the fourth quarter of that week zero loss at Bergen Catholic. And he remained out of the lineup even past that Cardinal Hayes game, returned on October 21st at Kellenberg. But that was a lopsided win, and the Moore win was lopsided, and the Kellenberg win was lopsided, and it was 35-13 against Farrell, so Hicks really didn't play four tough quarters of football. And it was one thing that uh, was concerning to Joe Spagnolo. and uh, Hicks literally played the first play of this game, suffered an injury, and has not returned. This Bassesi kick, unlike the others, returnable from Garcia at the five. Tries to angle his run back, and he has swallowed up. Good open field tackle. 35 makes the tackle. That's Jaleel Stewart. Yeah, so all of a sudden, Rich Bielan coming out in a, a tie ball game, with kind of poor field position, starting off at about the 15 yard line. So, going to look to go 85 yards and recapture this lead here at Moglia Stadium at Fordham University. So Beelin on the field to help lead this offense. Their first play from scrimmage starts from their own 15-yard line. Beelin goes up the middle, gets a few on the play. Let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Jared Valuzzi, who's on the field. Rich Bielan's name has been called out a lot tonight for Cardinal Hayes, but the entire Bielan family has had a huge impact for Hayes football as older brother Henry, who's currently at Duke, led Cardinal Hayes to a 2019 championship. And here tonight, younger brothers Rich and Blake, both with Division I offers in their own right, are looking to help the Cardinals get a AAA championship. Guys, back up to you. Thanks, Jared. For Cardinal Hayes. The Iona defense stout here on their first 
uh, or I uh, Hayes's first drive of the second half. No doubt, not given much so far. So third and six for Richie Beelan. The Beelan story, pretty remarkable that Jared detailed. Incredible athlete from an incredible family. We've got to know Richie's family through the years. Henry, his older brother, got some starts at Duke this year. Well, it goes back to dad, right, at Vanderbilt. There's an out to Cleveland. Charlton, and he'll move the chains. But yeah, dad, uh, Henry at Vanderbilt back in the day. Uh, you mentioned Henry, a quarterback at Duke. Uh, but what's most impressive to me is just, so now how do you connect you know, the Beelins to Cardinal Hayes? Well, it's done by Willie Colon, uh, the Super Bowl winning uh, standout as it's a short run there. Uh, he attends the first AME church uh, where Papa Beelin, Henry, is the pastor as well, so right, he goes there, he speaks to Pastor Beelan. Oh, you got some boys? <laughs> I got a great school for you. Here we go. Let me introduce you to CJ O'Neill. Second and 10, back to Charlton. Runs right through a few defenders, through his own block, and a late flag is thrown. It's so impressive, it's Cleveland Charlton, 6'5", but a thin guy at about 175 pounds, and the way that he runs with physicality here, keeping those legs pumping, and breaking tackles down the sideline is nothing short of spectacular. Our referee, Ken Breitenstein, another face mask penalty. And this the five yard variety. So it will move the chains and place the ball at the 45 yard line. I feel like more face masks called in this game of yeah. the five yard variety than I've seen in a while. I mean, you, pr you prefer that to the 15, there's no doubt about that, but. High snap, Beelan slings it sidearm, trying to find Charlton. Beelan looked like he was on the baseball field behind us, trying to turn two from second base. Yeah, kind of a rare miscue from Rich Beelan. Bit of a sloppy technique there at the sidearm throw. And I'm sure he can pull that off most times, but that time just kind of got away from him. We don't have like an official, there it is, the baseball field right behind there. I think it's Houlihan Field. Antoine tries to bounce it to the outside. And again, great job defensively. Smothering a very physical running back in Kenneth Antoine. And it looked like, again, got to give credit to Zero on the play. Zakar Morris. Yeah, yeah Zakar Morris, 6'2", 280 from Wappingers Falls. And he's a guy, 50 tackles on the year from that D tackle spot. Incredibly productive. And he broke his foot back in May during the live period workouts. Uh, so he missed a lot of those coaches who made their way up to New Rochelle, out to Mara Field. Third and 10, Beelan. Diving attempt, but no good for Charlton. And it would appear here that Hayes will be forced to punt. So the Iona Prep defense making a big stand. And, you know, Pat, I don't. We don't have like an official number here, but um, a large crowd, man, a huge crowd here tonight in the Bronx. Uh, there is still room down to the left of us at these bleachers here uh, to stand around, but um, you've got people right up on the, look at the fake and Beelan. This is one of the beauties of having your quarterback also be your punter and your kicker because things like this are always a possibility. I love this play call here from Coach C.J. O'Neill. Gutsy on your own 45, but I think he felt that his sideline needed an injection of energy, and this is exactly what the doctor ordered. Rich Beelan, his quarterback, his punter, he can do it all, and right there dials up the fake to move the chains. A little bit of confusion as Hayes getting set. Empty backfield for Beelan. Charlton in motion. Faked his way. Beelan tries to go the other way. And he's pulled down behind. And how many times have we called out number 31 tonight? Gabe George. 
Yeah, Gabe George, really a guy with just tremendous upside. I mentioned it earlier. He's six foot six, two 250 pounds. He's only a junior. But, boy, does this guy have upside. I wouldn't be shocked to see him playing in a major Power 5 program in a couple years. Yeah, transfer from Brookfield to Connecticut. Was raw when they got him, but, uh, man, he has picked up the scheme well. Ridiculous upside. Second and ten. We try it again. This time it goes to Charlton, but he kind of tripped on his own, and a late flag is thrown again. Yeah, it looks like the, uh, the turf mo monster responsible for that tackle right there. See what that flag is? It is against Hayes. I didn't see exactly uh, what Ken Breitenstein called. Here we go. So it's an offensive face mask penalty. Got to give credit to this uh, officiating crew for being on the ball when it comes to face masks tonight. And there you see some of the crowd. Yeah, Dylan, obviously, it's just kind of speculation when we throw a number out there, but kind of going into this, we were thinking maybe five, 6,000. I wouldn't be shocked if you have a higher number than that. I didn't get a chance to ask uh, Scott here at Fordham what the capacity is uh, at the stadium. Beelan tries to tuck it under. And I'll tell you, it feels like they're doing a much better job, Iona is, as Brennan Presley, the sophomore, uh, makes the big tackle of just sort of finding and locating Beelan and, and, and wrapping up right away. Yeah, they're doing a good job taking account of him. Uh, really when Rich Beelan makes you pay is when all of a sudden you're trying to take care of business on the back end, nobody gets home, and Rich Beelan is able to just kind of do what he wants to back there, making things happen. But they've had kind of a spy going on him at different times during this half and been very successful. Third and 14, and there's Antoine kicking it to the outside, has an upfield block, and he gets back a lot of those yards. Big run by Kenneth Antoine. Declan McCauley ultimately able to bring him down, but I think you'll notice, Dylan, right here he goes for the shoelace tackle because going up high on big number 22 is no fun, especially here in the second half. So fourth and five. And Hayes especially considering where you are in the field. Uh, it is four down territory. Beelan follows the blocks, cuts it around the corner, and he'll get the first down. Followed Antoine to the spot, and he moves the chains. What a play right here by Rich Beelan, just catching a bad snap, which isn't the, the start that you look for, and then just following Kenneth Antoine. <laughs> Might get, get away with a little bit of a hold there on Declan McCauley, but just enough for Rich Beelan to move those chains. Yeah, we only had a second to read some of the lips, but hold oh, was, <laughs> was definitely coming from the lips of that far sideline. First and 10 inside the 30. Beelan hands off to Antoine, pushes forward for a few. And that toll of Kenneth Antoine just slowly starting to take its course on this Iona defense. Another four yarder. Back to Antoine, lowers the shoulder, and again, Gets forward, a pair of tacklers, Micah Hunter, one of those, joined by Declan McCauley. It does feel, Pat, like every time we call a tackler, Declan McCauley is uh, right in the mix. Well, you know, when you're 220 and you can run up to 22 miles an hour, you got no excuse not to be there, right? So. <laughs> but yeah, absolute props to big number 40 from Larchmont, making his presence felt out there today. Came into this game with 59 tackles, 10 for losses, including three sacks. Back to, look at this, Antoine. Oh, Kenneth Antoine what a play. to the house. Touchdown, Hayes. Dylan, this has Varsity Media Top 10 written all over it. Kenneth Antoine will not go down. You'll see him right here with just the will to run through would-be tacklers. They're bouncing off his shoulder pads. He's got that cut, and boom, the second he sees daylight. That's all she wrote. Kenneth Antoine 
giving the Cardinals a six-point lead here with three minutes left in the third. Antoine's second rushing touchdown of the game and 16th of the season. And what a big moment as Beelin puts the PAT up and in. 21-14, Hayes the lead with 3.34 left in the third. And no time like the present to get to know Kenneth Antoine a little more, right? We picked the right guy, there's no doubt. Sunny and cool, you got half of that, Kenneth. You got the cool part. Uh, and of course, again, this is Thanksgiving right around the corner. It's about the desserts as well as the turkey. So apple pie, pumpkin, other, gave him a lot of choices. Um, apple pie a la mode, that's a great choice. Can't fault him there. Highlight of the playing career, I made sure that we put in in parentheses so far. Because that <laughs> might have been it right now. Uh, but that 69-yard touchdown against St. Anthony's in the quarterfinal is it right now for Kenneth Antoine. Ask him tomorrow, he might have a different answer. Yeah, making some new memories, going to depend on what happens over the last 15 minutes or so here at Moglia Stadium. But boy, what a start for Kenneth Antoine. And again, the important response, right, from Hayes. Iona had just tied it. Their defense was looking pretty good. And then Antoine getting in the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the game. So Beelin back to kick. And it is interesting, you know, you, you almost wonder like, even in this, wasn't there somebody else? Isn't there someone <laughs> in the school who could do this and just give Richie Beelin a little bit of a break? But apparently not. With another quality return there. Was that Nardi once, once more? Or? No, this time it was Dowdy. Steve Dowdy, great return there. And that's just what Iona needed. They're going to start with the ball at it around the 46-yard line or so. And 325 remaining in the third quarter. You know, just to note, great to see just before the second half started, the legendary former Cardinal Hayes basketball coach, Tom Murray, came by, stopped by. Uh, gave us his blessing, said you guys are doing a great job, and uh, loved the atmosphere here in the Bronx. That's always the validation we're looking for, especially up here in the Bronx. So good to know that Varsity Media is welcome. Yeah, listen, plaudits don't come easy in the Bronx, right? <laughs> exactly. You've got to earn them. Every ounce. <laughs> you see the quick out, finding Eric Governor. you got to remember, uh, the last time that Iona Prep was out on the field on the offensive side of the ball, went right down. With ease, going to look to replicate some of that success. Second and four for the Gales. Oh, a little bit of trickery here. As there's Dowdy on the end around, diving forward and getting just shy of the 30 yard line. Yeah, Steve Dowdy gives that little stutter step in the open field, and then he's off. Really nice play. Got some momentum here on offense for Iona Prep looking to respond. There's the out trying to find Caden Hewlin. Hewlin had a touchdown in the first half. Not much there. You know, one of the things we spoke to Joe Spagnolo about was playing here in the Bronx. He's had that experience twice. Stepanak Iona in 2014 and then Hayes Stepanak in 2015. He says it definitely helps the Bronx Westchester crowd. He figured, you know what, game at six o'clock, you go to Arthur Avenue before, maybe have a dinner. Perhaps if your team wins, uh, you head out to the city afterwards. And look at that, Hayes defensively eating up that play, Boyaki. Boyaki flies around the field. 190 pound senior in there early. And looked like they're gonna go for the double pass here with Dowdy. Dowdy doesn't like what he sees downfield and wisely decides to pull it, live to see another down. And gotta credit Corey Rock there as well. He was that first tackler and, uh, or attempted tackler and uh, his boys came in to help out. Big third down and 12 here. Not exactly what this Iona offense is built for. Necessarily driving the ball downfield. Trips left and a flag is thrown. 
as Gaston pushes forward to about the 30. Short game. There is a penalty on the play. So let's see what the penalty is and what the decision will be from Hayes. It is short, well short, right, of the first down marker. So do you give the Iona offense another opportunity or do you decline here? Ken Brighton, Ken Breitenstein is having that conversation with the Hayes sideline. We know what Blake Bielan wants to do. He wants to push him back. <laughs> Blake Bielan's eyes, just an opportunity to play another third down, another obvious pass rushing scenario, which is always going to be fun in his eyes. But His coach says no, so they'll decline that one, which will bring up a fourth down. Fourth down and eight. If you're Iona, probably don't want to punt from here. Doesn't make a ton of sense punting from the 30-yard line. Because even if you get a stop, even if you get stops, you know, it's stopped at the 30 or not the end of the world, yeah. obviously. Gaston, pump fakes, under pressure, sends it downfield. It was caught <laughs> at the one, but there is a flag. Steve Dowdy, are you kidding me right here? With the concentration to go up, get that one, and also with the toe tap, and he was interfered with, that don't matter, to number eight. The junior making the most of his opportunity to play here at home. The Bronx native going up. And we'll see this one. Gaston was hammered on this play. Gutsy call driving the ball downfield on a fourth and eight scenario. Oh, and hits wow. The pile on too. That is just an absolute thing of beauty from a guy, Steve Dowdy, who you'll probably be hearing about on Saturdays, maybe Sundays in the future. So the stoppage is an injury timeout. But just based on the way they're working, and I think it's on Gaston, it appears to be cramping. You know, one thing you gotta keep in mind is even though it's freezing cold outside, these athletes are still burning through a lot of water, losing fluids. When it's hot out, everybody knows I gotta get my water when I get to the sideline as you see Joey Gaston get some electrolytes in. But a little bit easier to forget when you're freezing your tail off. So let's hope that number one is okay. And you hear it so often, right? And, and listen, you know better than most, you know, if you're cramping now, like that isn't going to happen. Like, you <laughs> Once you're cramping, that, it's too late. You exactly. do that 24, 48 hours before uh, the game, and you can see not putting any pressure on that left foot. Yeah, that's, that's a Charlie horse. I can tell by the way that he's kind of gimping over to the sideline right there. I can tell you, I don't know if the trainers have it right now at Iona Prep, but in college you always used to do a little witch's brew, which is a super salty cocktail that can get you right back to life. So we're going to go Wildcat, I think, here. Oof. Yeah, you can flex if you do things like that. There's no doubt. Amari Valentine. Six foot tall, 315 pounds, and just not making life easy. Backup quarterback right here with the give to Kaisim Springer, and nothing you can do if you're big number four, but just brace for impact. So Julian Guzman, number 15 at QB. Obviously, probably not going to pass it here with the backup quarterback in the game. And they're forced to burn a timeout. That's the one they didn't want to do. You can see kind of the, the coaching staff at Iona upset it at having to utilize a, a timeout there with five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, Coach Bagnola very frustrated. You but only have a few of those yeah. to use during a game. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, these coaches are limited in the amount of practice time that they get during the week. So a lot of times your backup quarterback isn't getting all those reps. You're relying on him to get those mental reps as the quarterback, you know, the starter's preparing himself. But right there, just like Guzman, not quite ready for whatever was called, dialed up on the sideline and trying to get on the same page. So during this timeout, See the kind of mash unit over there on the sideline for Iona Prep. 
Smarter coach Spagnuolo, though, to burn that timeout as opposed to wasting a second down opportunity here near the goal line. Really a paramount importance that Iona ties this one up right here. You know, we mentioned the injuries before as well to burn uh, as well as Pauletti and Joe Wolf also out of this game, the wide receiver uh, out with Mono. So let's see Guzman now off the timeout. Trying to organize his guys. He's got Springer to his right hip. Flips it inside, going towards the end zone and getting in. Touchdown for Dowdy. Wow, kind of love this from Steve Dowdy. Only right that he gets a touchdown after that spectacular catch to bring it down to the one yard line. But Dowdy's going to do a little cute play right here. Going to get the ball in the motion right up the middle. He's patient, waiting for his lead blockers, and then just cuts in for the score to bring this one within one, tied up pending a, P a PAT. Did you see there late uh, who came piling in? C.J. Mailsman, 56, the left guard. He was making sure Dowdy was getting in. Man. <laughs> yeah, he put all 280 on his back and said, uh, let's make sure you're in that end zone. So the holder is Guzman. The snapper is Plunkett. Bessessi's kick is up and good. And we end the third quarter the way that we started the first quarter. We are tied. Cardinal Hayes and Iona Prep, 21 all entering the fourth and final quarter. You don't want to miss this exciting ending. It's all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Picturesque campus here at Rose Hill Gym, and there you see the moon as well as we started in the morning, and it is now evening here, three Catholic High School Football League Championship games, and the big boy championship, the AAA, of course, tied at 21 going into the fourth quarter. Dylan, the way today's going, my only regret is that there's not a fourth game for us to call after this. I do not have that same <laughs> Bassesi. <laughs> and if you can see the look from Chris Sweeney, you can tell he also was not interested in that. Eli Garcia, this time sent backwards, going nowhere. What a play right there by the Iona Prep defender, number 44, Mank Frank Michelli, who had the big time uh, fumble recovery earlier on. 44 playing his absolute tail off here in his last game in Iona uniform. Potentially. 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 Should they win, they'll also, the winner of this will compete in the Catholic State Championship game as well. Which will be downstate this time around. If y'all will recall, last year St. Anthony's had to trek up to St. Francis in Hamburg. Snowy. For a uh, blizzard. Yeah. Hopefully a little warmer next weekend. That was one of the rare trips to Buffalo that... Chris Hardett, the president of the Catholic League, did not make. <laughs> He's a big Bills fan, makes as many trips to Buffalo as he can. Uh, that one he was not interested in making. As you see Antoine pushing forward, uh, and worth and mentioning, of course, those was big boys up front helping to plow those holes. Absolutely. These guys doing a great job all day long. Start with Daryl Jenkins, the big left tackle, 6'3", 275. Norris Anderson, Danny Frazier, Mike Dunn, and Jaden Mann. All of them giving ample time to Richie Bielan and Sean Antoine throughout today. Well, that was Kenneth Antoine. Sean's on the sideline. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kenneth. <laughs> As Kenneth pushes forward, which brings up a third and one. And while others maybe get tired at the fourth, looks like Antoine gets into a different level. Turning, churning, pushing forward, and moving the chains. The difference between Kenneth Antoine and most backs in this league is that, you know, when Declan McCauley comes flying off the edge, usually you're going down. But right here, any arm tackle, 
is not going to be enough for big number 22. It takes gang tackling, and he's going to fight forward for the first down. He's like hitting one of those magic mushrooms in Super Mario, getting the extra, <laughs> the the little extra energy charge here in the fourth quarter. It looks like walking off injured Kenji Burnham. And this game certainly uh, not for the faint of heart. A lot of uh, different guys going down. A really physical football game, as we expect in a physical football league. Yeah, some grown man football here in the Bronx. An area of the country that prides itself on toughness with no shortage of it here at Fordham. Beelan fakes it, goes over the middle to Charlton. What a catch, Cleveland Charlton still moving those legs. And here come the big boys from behind with the extra push. Did you see the motor on Jaden Mann pushing forward? Are you kidding me right here? Jaden Mann, big shout out, the big junior, 282 pounds getting downfield to try and help out Cleveland Charlton. But what about number one right here? Charlton just keeps fighting. Three Gale defenders like, all around on, The Calvary's coming. <laughs> Keep going. And I got you, boom. buddy. You see 77 <laughs> with that extra little love tap for good measure. And now there's an injured Iona player on the sideline. That's the reason here. That's the reason for this official's timeout. You know, Dylan, we hate to see these injuries, but... When there are injuries, we are grateful for the fact that this area does have Catholic health to come in and provide whenever needed. I mean, we certainly thank our sponsors here today, of course, uh, Maspeth Federal Savings and Catholic Health as well, Onyx Salva at Speed Island. And we could have had a Speed Island speedy play of the quarter or of the <laughs> drive. There's been so many big uh, plays with Blazing speed in this one. I guess Speed Island might be doing too good of a job because there, there's apparently just too much raw athleticism out here on the field <laughs> at Fordham University. The player still down there getting worked on. As Hayes 9-2 and two, uh, on this season. Their two regular season defeats. Uh, one to Stepanak. Or excuse me, one to St. Anthony's, which they avenged in the quarterfinals, the other to Iona. So a chance here, as we mentioned in the open, uh, a bit of a revenge tour uh, for Cardinal Hayes. Looking, uh, listen, if you avenge both of those, you go 10-2, and two, you win a championship, uh, and you're sitting pretty. Yeah, I think there's uh, pretty much nothing more they could ask for out of this season than to avenge their second loss that they had, already avenged St. Anthony's. And, uh, you know, tight one right here. I get, I get the feeling this could come down to whoever has the ball last. As you see, Teron Johnson. That's not a good – I mean, no, you don't want a player out for sure, uh, but that is an instrumental part of your defense. Yeah, especially Teron, a guy with multiple Power 5 offers. Been working with him through about you, going back to his eighth grade year. He's had a great career at Iona Prep. Antoine took a pause and a stutter step and then sent down. With like Brennan Presley as well as Zakar Morris in the backfield right there all over Antoine before he got a shot. Yeah, hit for a loss. Looks like about two. Presley, a guy whose name we've called a decent bit today, only a sophomore from Harlem. So really a lot of runway in his career. Excited to see what he gets done over the next couple years. If you remember a year ago at Mitchell Athletic Complex, he scored the touchdown for Iona Prep in that, in that loss to St. Anthony's. Got to figure it's important for those guys to be able to draw on that experience here tonight. Bielan in the air. He will go deep. Looking end zone. Incomplete. Dante Nardi with an incredible play right here to break this one up at the very last second. Looked like Richie Bielan had this one right on target for Reed Jones in the end zone. But Nardi's going to fly in at the very last second. You see Bielan with a clean pocket, step into this throw, perfectly placed. But Nardi had his eyes on the football and able to play that ball to perfection. Textbook defensive back play. And another injury for Iona Prep on the other side of the field. And it seems like their guys, man, they are just dropping here at the worst time of the game. And 
coming in, you would say certainly it was Hayes the healthier of the two teams because Iona was down two really, really influential linemen, right? Rowan Byrne, of course, their left tackle, uh, who has a whole host of offers. The junior from Bronxville, injured since the Stepanak game. Michigan, Notre Dame, Ohio State, all among those offering Rowan Byrne. And then you get Dan Pauletti, who has done an incredible job at your starting center spot, who moved from left guard from a year ago. The senior from Rybrook got hurt in the semifinal against Stepanak. Then you get Jalen Hicks back, but now he was hurt the first play. And then we saw Gaston go out with cramping and Johnson a moment ago, and now another injured Gale as well, and another guy in the secondary, looks it like, would appear. Looks like Jaden Codrington down hurt. So another one of those seniors in the defensive backfield. Don't look now, but Iona's without their top two starting quarterbacks, Jaden Codrington and Teron Johnson. So potentially more exposed on that back end these next few plays. And I didn't mention Dalton Lozen, the sophomore nose guard. He's also been out injured as well. You know, that's why when you're talking about the AAA level of football here in New York, you really need to have that competitive depth. When you look over the sidelines, so many different guys who can step up and contribute for Iona Prep, and they're really being called upon here tonight if they want to win a championship. Beelan back on his horse. Richie Beelan inside the 10. Beelan towards the end zone, and he stopped. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Word looks like football. Richie Beeland fumbled that ball as he was going over the goal line, and this is an Iona Prep ball. Wow. I don't believe it. Can you talk about a momentum shift? I was looking at this as Richie Beeland bringing it in for a beautiful 35 yard scramble for six. But let's look at this replay. It appears that Beeland is going to fumble this ball right as he dives for that goal line, and the refs got it right. That's perfect call. Picked up by number nine, Adante Nardi. And did you see the one thing that Beelan did? Was he tucked the football inside, not to the outside. Watch it again. You see him tuck it to the inside? Got to get it to the outside in that scenario. And, and he did. The helmet and then he moved it. Yeah. yeah. Then he moved it to the other side. Yeah, hat on ball right there. Adante Nardi, fortunate to pick that one up in bounds. And boy, what a break for Iona Prep as Joey Gaston re-enters the game. That's two fumbles by Richie Beelan in big situations, but look out! The defense comes up big, and this is a safety! <laughs> Aldrich Boyaki And Smart, Aiden Smart as oh well. Oh word, Blake Beelan also in there, big number 96, fired up on that Cardinal Hayes sideline. So are the coaches in the booth next to us. They are fired up as well. Dylan, I don't know if I can handle this emotional roller coaster as Cardinal Hayes reclaims momentum in this game. Looks like they're just trying to get that ball to Dowdy underneath, get a little bit cute with it. It was Beelan. How Sorry, about that? nothing going right there. Blake Beelan, he is his brother's keeper. <laughs> exactly. Right? Richie Beelan makes the, the mistake and the turnover, and Blake's like, I got you, bro. He's like, All right, we wanted six, but we'll take two in the ball back. How about that? Really impressive and just soul sucking for Iona after feeling so good with that turnover to have to give up two and now the free kick. An incredible range of emotions, of momentum changes here. One of the craziest 10 seconds of my broadcasting career. Rich Beelan appeared to have been in the end zone or towards the end zone as he dove towards the pylon. He was stripped at the end zone. But then Iona couldn't get out of their own end zone as Blake Beelan causes the safety. So a two-point lead for Hayes, and they get the ball. It's kind of like in basketball, right? I'm at Hayes, Joe Lodes would be like, and one. And one. Yes, sir. So yeah, now, now a huge opportunity. Feels like the momentum firmly fixed on the Hayes sideline after that safety. So look for Rich Beeland to step up and kind of pile on. So Bassesi 
with this free kick. Garcia is deep. That's a terrific kick. Fielded. Flag on the play. Ooh, hard hitting as well. What a hit. Sincere Crooks was the returner. And there is a flag on the play as well. Looks like Alex Trulson one came through on that big hit. I'll tell you, you know, the referees so often, right? Like, it's the hardest job in this business because they can make nobody happy. But uh, what a tough job that Ken Breitenstein and his, and his guys have here uh, today. Yeah, they've been, been very active all day long. A lot of different things to sort through, but got to give our hats off to them, to our white hat. So a block in the back against Hayes. Wow, what a uh, kind of shift there. You know, you're expecting on that free kick for Hayes to start off this drive with tremendous field position. Obviously, Iona's kicking a bit, bit deeper than from a normal kickoff. With that incredible leg from Bassesi, all of a sudden, and then you tack on a block in the back, Hayes pinned down at the 20-yard line. Beelin spins and goes forward himself. Gets to the 20 Five yard line. We mentioned again in the regular season game, it was a struggle for Richie Bielan. And it was probably the toughest game that he had as a quarterback this year. Yeah, Bielan, I mean, a guy who's completing well over 50% of his balls, completed about 30% or so the last time he matched up with Iona Prep. So, been a much better day for him so far, but more work to be done. Second and seven. Hand off, and Antoine gets the push from the guys up front as well. Antoine just following behind a couple guys, Daryl Jenkins and Norris Anderson on that play. Antoine's so dangerous with that strong lower body, so tough to get him down to the ground. Third and three. Pace definitely a bit slower for Cardinal Hayes now that they have a lead. Beelin takes it himself. And sent backwards still on his feet, but the whistle was blown. Really nice play there by Victor Utenot stepping up with that hit. Two-year starter, middle linebacker. Four. You know, he's more of a run stopper than a pass guy, but hey, you want him in there on third and short for that reason right there. Yeah, did the job, right? No gain, so it's a fourth and four for Beelin. I don't think Iona Prep's getting caught off guard with a fake here. Looks like they've got their, their safe formation. Although Hayes needed one more player onto the field. Beelin gets off. A good looking punt. Takes a Hayes wow. bounce as well. <laughs> what a job by Beelin. Downs at the 21. What can't this guy do? I heard Rich Beelin's driving the bus back to Cardinal Hayes after this. Just so impressive. So back and forth we go, and uh, 6.32 left in the fourth quarter, and perhaps again. It's a reminder on how good of a field goal kicker that Sam Bassesi is. Yeah, Not I sure mean, if we're getting ahead of ourselves, but that could be the difference in this one. I mean, that's a luxury considering, you know, if you're Joey Gaston, you only got to get down to about the 20 to have a shot to take the lead here. Gaston airs it out, goes his near side. What a catch! Bobbling it, staying on his feet, twisting and turning. Still on his feet! <laughs> Steve Dowdy. That was just some how bad do you freaking want it type running from number eight Dowdy. Bobbles the ball a little bit on the outset, but the senior, or the, sorry, junior will not be denied out here. Plays like a on senior. On the edge, plays like a senior, that's for sure. But wow, just the, the sheer will trying to light a fire up under the tail of this Iona prep team. Wow. How many, 
how many Cardinals did it take to take down Dowdy? Run up the middle. And again, it is an offensive line for Iona uh, that is missing two starters, but those dudes up front still getting the job done. Yeah, this offensive line doing a really good job today. First, first guy I'm looking at all day long is Jaden Nicolau, big number 71. If you'll notice, he's kind of bouncing around between either side of the line. He's 6'5", 305, so just been mauling people off the ball, doing a really good job. And one thing that they do, Iona, on offense is they pair those guys and move them uh, from side to side. So it's uh, you're kind of paired with a different guy as Dowdy. Another big catch, another first down reception. Steve Dowdy just playing like a man possessed right now, comes back to the ball. Fighting for it. Really nice job on the run by Joey Gaston at delivering a strike. What a great look there from Matt McCower brown Field level. So first and 10 for Iona. But, yeah, you'll see DiNapoli and Mailspin. They're the left tackle and left guard, but they'll move to the right as a pair, and the other side will move to the left as well. There's a run up the middle. Another tackle by the Carpet Monster. I think you can chalk that up to two on the evening. As it was Springer, the carry from right here in the Bronx. And what a great story Springer has been. He tore his ACL on July 26th, 2021. And then on the year anniversary of that, tore his left ACL as well. And uh, really has been positive about his rehab uh, and feels better than ever now. There's Dowdy. Whoa, lost his lid again. <laughs> First order of business is if you're Steve Dowdy, you got to get to the sideline and tighten up that chin strap a little bit. You'd have Second to Second time on the drive. <laughs> That hat's coming off. Player safety's always got to come first, but another really nice play by number eight out there, just kind of putting the team on his back, though, Marshawn Lynch style. Maybe he can borrow the helmet from the Gale. <laughs> there we go. Can you, utilize, can you use that in this game? Here's Gaston trying to bounce it to the outside. Great block up field, and actually he ran right in to the back of your governor. It wasn't necessarily pretty right there, but Joey Gaston able to move the chains. And as his clock ticks down below 345 in the fourth quarter, really beautiful drive here for Iona that they're going to look to cap off with a touchdown. That's the ideal situation. Typically. That's what you're, you're within Bassesi's range pretty much at this point. Gaston, he's got... Big 27, Caden Hewlin behind him. He'll take the pitch left. And Hewlin tracked down from behind. Big hit by number 10, Boyaki. Aldris Boyaki, the senior, having himself a really nice nice day today. Able to chase down Hewling for no gain. You know, I know. Not probably an immediate concern, but we're getting to the point where C.J. O'Neill needs to start thinking about the clock. He's got three timeouts left. A little less than 2.40 left in the game. Gaston, that was an incomplete pass, so the clock will stop on that incompletion. You see the intended target, Crew Davis. Big third and 11. It's third down and 11. Even though Bassessi is a very talented kicker, this is by no means a chip shot. From here, you'd be looking at about 38, 39 yard field goal from this spot on the field. Yeah, his long this year again, 40. But a reminder, as I feel like is needed in each of these games that we mentioned, the goal posts are the college goal posts. So they're uh, not as wide as you have on the high school level. Third and 11. Gaston goes back across the other way, has a receiver. And what a terrific catch. Looks like number 10 right there. Nate Schillingford. Nate Schillingford, 6'4", 215. He's a big target out there. That's his second catch on the day. After coming into today with only two catches on the whole year. And now you've got a first and goal from the five-yard line. Briona Prep. Handoff up the middle, churning, turning the legs. Touchdown, Iona. Caden Hewlett, his second rushing touchdown of this game. 
And now if you're Iona, doesn't look like they're going to, but I think if you're Coach Spags, got to go for two in this situation. Right now you're up by four. Being up by five doesn't do you any good. Being up by six might actually do you some good. So I'm shocked to see the field goal unit come out here for the point after attempt. Julian Guzman is the holder. Matt Plunkett. And there you go. Going for two. Turning in the end zone. And the conversion is good. There we go. Another really nice play. We've been calling his name all day long. Declan McCauley on the defensive side of the ball. Here he steps up. So they showed PAT. And we'll show it again on the replay. What you see right here. Yeah, design fake. Declan McCauley out in the flats. Kind of fights for that one. Not as easy as he would have hoped. And I was sitting here second-guessing Coach Spagnolo. My sincere apologies. How dare you. <laughs> I always knew you would make the right call. So 29-23, the lead for Iona Prep. And if it maybe bears repeating, I don't really think it does. But if you've not if you've learned one thing about Hayes this year, it's that uh, the game is not over until it is absolutely over. And Rich Bielan still has an opportunity to impact the game. Exactly, exactly. Ain't over till the fat lady sings. I don't see her anywhere, so hold your breath if you're an Iona Gales fan because Rich Bielan's got two minutes and 23 seconds, and that might as well be an eternity. Deepest sincere crooks. And Eli Garcia joining him back there as well. The Sessies put at least two of his kicks five yards deep into the end zone. Feel the tension in this environment near sellout crowd at Fordham University. So that one, a touchback again. Third touchback of this game for Bassesi. He came into this one with 60 kickoffs, 39 for touchbacks. That's ridiculous numbers from a five star kicker. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest plays of the game that won't get any attention is really just his kickoff following that safety. You know, they're in a situation where they're probably going to give the ball most times to Rich Bielen around the 40-yard line, but he, kick, he kicks that one nice and deep, able to kind of pin him back around the 20, and all of a sudden that jump started that I own a prep drive. So here we go, Rich Bielen. You can see the timeouts at the bottom of your screen. Hayes with three, Iona with two. Hayes from their own 20. It's Bielen. Airs it out, that's a completed pass. And the pass was to number eight, Reed Jones. So Hayes does have all three timeouts, so time isn't a huge concern at this junction, but certainly don't want to be throwing too much stuff over the middle and letting that clock run. High snap, Bielen rolls, finds Garcia, and he gets out at about the 40. And that right there is the precise kind of look that C.J. O'Neill is going to be looking for at a Rich Bielen on this drive. Drive the ball to the sidelines, stop that clock, and keep moving. Getting positive yardage. Worth keeping in mind is Iona down to backup cornerbacks out on the edges, so a little bit more exposed than usual up against those threats from Cardinal Hayes. Bielen rolls right, dumps it. What a tremendous catch! Had a range back, somehow found a way to get that football. Wow. Abdul Ba. Really nice play by Ba. Mainly a contributor at the linebacker position, but right here you'll see him kind of slipping underneath, playing a little bit of an H-back role, and he's got a big frame, so not, a, not the kind of guy you want to try and take down solo in the open field. Really nice yards after the catch. Not an easy catch at all. There's Bielen trying to push it up the middle. Sent backwards, but he's still on his feet. Bielen trying to get around the edge and finally wrestle down. Looks like number two, Jaden Codrington, right there, able to finally wrestle Rich Bielen down. And looks like CJ O'Neill is going to use that first time out. We 
showed you Kenneth Antoine before and got to know him a little bit. Why don't we meet one of the Gales now in this final 118 of the fourth and final quarter. It's your boy, Nardi. Yeah, Dante Nardi has had himself a great day with a fumble recovery earlier, great pass breakup. Favorite Thanksgiving food, macaroni and cheese. Gotta love that, it's a classic. Favorite football weather, nice cool day, not too sunny. I think you got that out here today. It's nice and cold and there's certainly no sun. And then favorite movie quote, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Al Pacino from Scarface, gotta love that right there. Got those killer instincts on the back end putting him to good use, and he's going to really need to buckle down here for this final minute 18. I love some of the classic references, right? Like, These kids get it. Yeah. <laughs> you had the Godfather before, right? Yeah, were you worried it was going to be like Frozen quotes or something like that? I hear plenty generation? of those at home. It's not a problem. <laughs> second and 10 for Hayes. So off the timeout, second and 10 for Hayes. Trying to orchestrate this Final two-minute drill. Beelan, plenty of time, airs it out deep. He's got Eli Garcia. What a breakup. Wow, what a play by Adante Nartley. We just gave him some love right there, and he backs it up with another clutch pass breakup, reading the eyes the whole way of Rich Beelan. Gets such a clean pocket. That's a quarterback's dream, be able to step up like that and drive a ball downfield. Right on target if it weren't for number nine coming over the top. Maybe a game-saving play right there. So Beelan goes end zone to Garcia. Incomplete, stops the clock with 110 remaining. This though a third and long. You still do need to move the chains. Beelan rolls right. Ducks under pressure. Again, goes long. He's got Charlton in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, <laughs> Hayes! Touchdown, Hayes! Are you kidding me? Cleveland, Charlton! Rich Beelan avoids the rush, keeps this thing alive, and then does what he's done all year long, which is heave it downfield deep for big number one. Cleveland, Charlton is going to use all 6'5 of that frame up against the back line, toe tap in. Hayes ties the ball game, penning a PAT to take the lead. It is, what a clutch play. It is Bedlam in the Bronx. One minute remaining, a massive PAT for Rich Beelan. And that kick is up and it is good. The snap was great by Ba. Downer was your holder. And Beelan, of course, puts it through the uprights. And Rich Beelan just has ice in his veins right here. The moment is never too big for him. He's going to sit back with that rush, breathing down his throat. Still step into that pass, deliver an absolute strike. And who better to find than your weapon, Cleveland Charlton, and all 6'5 of that frame to go and take this lead here in this AAA title with just a minute on the, on the board. One of our players to watch, Cleveland Charlton. What an incredible catch in the back of the end zone. Another touchdown reception for Charlton. And I gotta say, I'm, I'm gonna make a bold stand here. Cleveland Charlton right now garnering FCS interest, but the way this guy has played all day as we get one more look at that clutch touchdown right here by number one. I'm telling you, Cleveland Charlton is a bona fide power five caliber receiver. I'd be shocked if he could walk into a lot of FBS programs and play tomorrow. And he's really putting on a show for everybody here tonight. So Beelan now set to kick off. And Hayes struggling here. They needed an extra player, nearly lost one as well. And now they're set to kick off. Beelan will do so. An end over end angling one. Look at this. What a job by Beelan. It was played like it was going to go out of bounds, which would have given uh, Iona some good field position. And then Beelan put a little bit of magic, a little bit of Beelan magic on that football and angled it, bouncing it into the end zone for the touchback. So 
All of a sudden, Joey Gaston looking at a uh, pretty long march down the field from his own 20-yard line. Only a minute, two timeouts for Iona Prep. Probably want to get to about the 20-yard line or so to be within field goal range for your kicker. So about 60 yards to go. Gaston, back to pass. Does exactly what you said he would do. Angles it towards the sideline, and that's where the catch was made by Rocco Presto. So six seconds off the clock, and Presto gets to the 29-yard line. Gaston rolls left, and again, finds an intended target in Ira Govenu. He also gets out of bounds. A good heads up play by Dylan Yorgovanu. Keeping things moving in the right direction. Good job by the offensive line for Iona Prep, giving a, a neat look for Joey Gaston to kind of roll out, be able to step into his throws the last couple plays. Do want to shout out Theologis, who's done a really good job at center, filling in for Dan Pauletti. Not an easy task. Gaston again goes sideline. And that was not a catch out of bounds. It was a tremendous grab, though, by Dowdy, who's limp as well. We've seen a few highlight reel plays thus far today from Steve Dowdy. And here's almost another one, just unable to get that one in bounds. It's pushed out. Really nice job with the force out by Aiden Smart. 42 seconds remaining. And a second and 10 for Iona. And it is getting loud here at Moglia Stadium here in Rose Hill. And Joe Spagnolo wants to call one of his final two timeouts. And there you see the Hayes faithful. Interesting spot to call a timeout right there considering the clock wasn't running. Um, I'm sure Coach Spagnuolo a little bit frustrated there considering only 42 seconds, so all those timeouts, so valuable. A year ago, Cardinal Hayes, they were two and eight. They lost their first six games, which included a four point loss to Pope John and a one point loss to Kellenberg. And they lost to these Gales of Iona. 56 to 13 in the quarterfinals. It was a young team. It was a young quarterback with a very young offensive line in front of them. Uh, but they have grown and they have matured and they find themselves now 42 seconds away from winning another AAA championship. And I might venture to say, you know, from two and eight to AAA title holders the next year, if they're able to close this one out, that might be the, the best turnaround story in New York Catholic football history. C.J. O'Neal, so close you can almost taste it, but more work to be done. Gaston looks deep. A one-handed grab. It looks that like an injury Schillingford right again? There. Yeah, it looks like Nate Schillingford, the tight end. Or did he not get play. it? Let's see if he was able to reel this one actually in. I thought he dropped it. On the yes, outside. he did. Yeah. You'll see right now, Cardinal Hayes faithful going absolutely ballistic on the sideline in support of their Cardinals. Third and 10. Gaston comes this way and that one's dropped as well. So now it's all down to this for Iona Prep. One opportunity, fourth and 10 to try and move it. Otherwise, CJ O'Neill will be able to cap this magical turnaround story, bringing his Cardinal Hayes Cardinals back to a AAA title. There's like a mosh pit happening behind the Cardinal <laughs> Hayes bench. Guys who perhaps don't have field passes finding their way onto the field. Here we go, fourth and 10. Gaston back to pass, goes deep, has a man, a first down. Crew Davis with the reception. Clock's going to stop just until they're able to get those chains set. So expect a spike right here from Gaston. 
Wines now, and there's the spike. Whoa, now is there spike. Spike and pain. And I'm hearing uh, from the Cardinal Hayes coaches in the uh, booth next to us, that is illegal, actually. Once you bobble a snap, you cannot spike the ball. So technically, that should be an intentional grounding based on the way that rule is written by the letter of the law. Well, it appears, at least, that we'll stay as is. Interesting, uh, interesting call to let get away from you there. but So second and 10. That's what C.J. O'Neill is calling for on the sideline. And he's still arguing. <laughs> The call. Wait, did they just call it? I think Coach O'Neill used a timeout to better argue his case. Right there, you'll see our official signaling that's an incomplete pass, but it was first a fumbled snap, picked up, and then spiked, which by the letter of the law actually makes that a normal attempt and therefore intentional grounding with no receiver in the area. So this should be a loss of down and a second and 25 scenario for Iona Prep. Unsure if our officiating team is going to be able to remedy the situation right now, but I know that's what C.J. O'Neill is calling for. We thought we would be treated to an unbelievable football game, uh, and it has lived up to the advanced billing. That's why thousands have made their way here to Rose Hill in the Bronx and why thousands are watching on the Varsity Media Sports Network as well. And if thousands are like me, thousands are having heart palpitations <laughs> right now with this uh, level of no drama. In the race. <laughs> Second and 10, Gaston tucks it under. Tries to make his way to the sideline, pulled back violently by Abdul Ba at the 30-yard line. And there is the final timeout called by Iona, 10 seconds remaining so right now you know i think that target line for a field goal you know your kicker is long on the season Bassesi is 40 yards so in order to get to a 40 yard field goal you have to be at about the 23 give or take a yard so right now they're at the 30 if i'm coach spagnolo third and seven i'm looking for a receiver to get to the sideline get to the sticks and get me to at least the 25 yard line so i can feel good about lining up for a game winning field goal yeah you're right nothing over the middle here. And the clock will stop if you get a first down, but only to set the chains. Anything over the middle has to be an extremely quick hitter that's resulting in a first down. I think for all intents and purposes, you're telling your receivers, get me to the sideline. Joey Gaston. He's made his way to New Rochelle after playing big boy football at St. Joe's Regional. It doesn't get bigger of a moment in high school for Gaston than this. Third and five, 10 seconds left, no timeouts remaining. Quick out, some trickery here, a little hook and lateral, and getting to the outside was Crew Davis. Or did they? Was that even complete in the first place? Number 23, Crew Davis. Looks like they call this one. Perhaps it, right there. To my naked eye, that was a catch. Looks like they didn't give it to Crew Davis, so that, that's going to make this a 47-yard field goal for Bassesi. Which is tough. Would be, a, would be a career long. Matt Plunkett is your long snapper. Julian Guzman is your holder. And timeout, Cardinal Hayes. DJ O'Neill going to let Bassesi think about this one a little bit. Looking at Ice. Ice Spice's brother <laughs> and the Gales. Yeah, I don't think you're comfortable, right, if you're Iona, but it, it's kind of, listen. Comfort's a moot point at this, this stage in the game. And how about this, too, right? Timeout. Bassesi's on an island. Right? He doesn't go to the huddle. You know what, this is a brutal situation, but as a kicker, this is exactly what you dream of, right? A career-long kick to try and walk off the field as a AAA title holder. Bassesi, seven of eight this season on field goal attempts. The long this year is 40. 
All right, so we got a championship play for ourselves right here, Dylan. It's been a lot of fun. Can't wait to see how this one plays out. Guzman puts the ball down. The kick is up, but it is short. And Cardinal Hayes in the Bronx. There's a flag on the play. There is a flag. There's hold, also hold up. a mass of humanity on the field. We need everybody to and the, field. The, game is not the Cardinal Hayes faithful are ready to call this one a championship, but the refs are going to have to bring some order to this situation somehow here because there's a flag on the play, and Iona's going to get one more chance. Yeah, we didn't see what the... Oh, I, it, and now here's the thing, right? Like, if this is against... If this is against Hayes, now you're moving this field goal five, yards, five closer. yards closer. And you gave Possessi a warm-up kick. So and Actually, you'd have, not that it maybe matters so much at this point, but you'd have a first down as well. But yeah, more so. importantly, are the number of yards. Somehow they're containing the humanity that ran out onto the field after that missed kick. But, wow, first down and... Iona's going to get one more chance at this thing. And you can imagine with the amount of Cardinal Hayes fans lined up on the sideline ready to storm the field. And they're, they're assessing a 15-yard penalty as well, which wow. I'm not exactly sure. The what ball. this call was, we got pandemonium. The ball's placed on the 15. And now. All of a sudden, yeah, you're looking at a 32 yard field goal down from a 47 yard field goal, which is much more in the Sessi's range. And the Hayes coaches want an explanation on why it's a 15 yard penalty. You can hear some. So this, Frustrations. a, what do we have, 32-yard attempt now for Bissessi. 32 yards for all the marbles. No right time. Right here, no time. Guzman gets the hold down. That kick is up. It is no good. No good, no, no good. And there's no flags. And the Hayes faithful say the ball never lies right there. Ball does not lie, but Sessi misses it. And they are AAA title holders for the first time since 2019 as the Cardinal Hayes faithful storm the field, losing it right here. A hell of a finish to this AAA title game. What a win for the Hayesmen in the Bronx, as it should be. C.J. O'Neal and his staff got to feel like a million bucks right now. Back on top of this mountain here in the Bronx, in their backyard. And it's hard to capture the emotion right here at Moglia Stadium here at Fordham University. Their third AAA title in school history. And what an incredible finish and one of the best football games I've had the privilege of calling on Varsity Media. Yeah, Hayes won it back in 2019, beating Stepanak 25-7. to They beat the Crusaders also in 2016. That was a wild one, 41-39 as well. And now the third AAA championship in program history. Listen, it's been a biblical season for <laughs> C.J. O'Neill and the Cardinals. It was a flood and a fire that affected uh, Cardinal Hayes. The flood happened in the locker room and the basketball court. That was earlier in the fall. And then the fire happened as there is C.J. O'Neill looking to get his guys together. The fire happened in the football office. But as C.J. O'Neill said in a video that he posted, the seal, that seal you see in the bottom right, that was untouched. And look at the celebration on the field. What a celebration in the Bronx here tonight. Right in the middle is the Cardinal. Yeah, they're, 
having just an absolute blast. You see that Cardinal in the middle. Wait a minute, you're not supposed to lose your head. Head off right there for the mascot. And it's just wonderful to see the kind of raw emotion down on the field. This celebration for the Hayes faithful. Anybody who went to Cardinal Hayes will proudly tell you that they graduated from there. They carried themselves as a Hayesman for the rest of their life. You're never the same after going to Cardinal Hayes and interacting with C.J. O'Neill. And you can see by the number of alumni joining them down on the field right now, just the outpouring of love and support for this whole team and staff, how much it means for these Cardinals down in the Bronx. The 21st year as the head coach of Cardinal Hayes. C.J. O'Neill might be a Mount St. Michael alum, but he absolutely bleeds Cardinals red. And what a moment for C.J. and his coaching staff and uh, somehow addressing his team in what is a massive humanity right now on the field. And a couple of his guys now trying to get their way to get to CJ with the Gatorade. There's a lot of people to get through though. <laughs> it might take a while. That's the local train to the Gatorade. <laughs> I don't know, they might get tired and just put it somewhere, I'm not sure. There's CJ. I don't think the Gatorade's found its way to him yet. And now, <laughs> as they soak up this moment, important to remember next weekend, they get the opportunity to win a state championship at Columbia, presumably. There you go. There's the Gatorade bath for C.J. O'Neill. <laughs> it was <laughs> eventually. So it is a season of flood, fire, and perhaps freezing right now for C.J. O'Neill. Uh, but he would uh, prefer nothing more at this moment. C.J. doesn't feel pain. He's been wearing shorts. Over the last 21 years at Cardinal Hayes, every single game. And you know that that, that little bath got to feel so good. That smile <laughs> coming through. That is and awesome. And that's a shot. Hopefully CJ and his daughter can remember forever. I think this dancing is going to keep on going on for a long time. <laughs> the Cardinal and the boom box. Yeah, they'll, be, they'll be having fun straight through the night in the Bronx here on a Saturday at Fordham. I think perhaps at some point we might maybe get an interview of some sort down there. I'm not sure. I do think, though, that we will get maybe the loudest rendition of the Cardinal Hayes fight song ever. And there you see it. And as we give congratulations to uh, Cardinal Hayes on their fantastic year, really important to keep in mind this excellent football game and who's on the other side of it. Iona Prep had a great year in their own right. They fought down to literally the last second of their season, were literally feet away from calling themselves AAA title holders, AAA champions once again. This time it breaks in favor of Cardinal Hayes, but Coach Spagnuolo and his staff, his team, have a lot to be proud of after the season they were able to put together. Yeah, difficult to get to the finish line and fall for a second straight season. They lost, of course, last year to St. Anthony's, a year after winning this title. So three straight trips to the AAA championship, and that is uh, quite an accomplishment of its own. Uh, but tonight, uh, the Gales fall just short and this miracle season. Look at the tears on that sideline for Cardinal Hayes. It tells you how much this means to these young men. <laughs> Got to love that. Coach O'Neill does not need a trophy today. That's the best trophy he's gotten in his life, his little daughter. But so special that he gets to share this, not only with his Hayes family, but with his own family as well. Yeah, you see uh, CJ with daughter Charlotte Ann. Now trying to just kind of direct traffic, it feels like. Uh, what an incredible moment. So, so special just looking at all the various different Hayes alumni, different community supporters who have taken to the field to kind of enjoy this celebration alongside them. So with so many uh, fans on the field, they've scrapped really the awards ceremony. 
Um, but those guys on the field don't care about that. They've got the trophy that they want. Of course, the AAA championship trophy. And that one's coming back to the Grand Concourse. Just a really impressive year, the way that Hayes was able to continue to fight, you know, stick to it. They had a heartbreaking loss earlier on this season on the Varsity Media Sports Network against St. Anthony's. They're able to kind of go back, get revenge for that game at Cy Donnelly Field out in South Huntington a couple weeks ago with a thorough beatdown of that Friar squad. Took care of business last week up in White Plains against a Stepanak squad that a lot of people thought would be able to handle Hayes with ease. Beat and then them, Hayes beat them in White Plains twice. Beat them in White Plains twice. And then you fast forward to right here tonight, able to beat an Iona squad that had beaten them by 11 earlier on this year. And just the fight, the will to win out of this Cardinal Hayes team shown through all year long. And that's why this is going to be a team remembered in really uh, the history of Cardinal Hayes High School. It is the revenge tour for sure. And uh, it ends here with a championship for those Cardinals. Uh, we've been a part of tremendous athletic success at uh, Cardinal Hayes, the basketball championship a couple of years ago, and now another football championship for Cardinal Hayes. C.J. O'Neill addressing his guys and the alums and the students <laughs> and the parents. It's really just one big family out there coming together. And that's what, one thing that makes Hayes a little bit different from your average Catholic school is just that, that real family kind of environment. These, these guys stay proud of being Hayes alumni for the rest of their lives. And they're happy to join them through all their successes. It's funny, I don't know how long it might take to get that kind of traditional championship trophy picture because it's just <laughs> madness down there in the end zone. And again, we'll endeavor, perhaps for an interview there among all that group There's a close look of the championship trophy in the AAA. And as we've mentioned before, uh, what an incredible journey that C.J. O'Neill has had, right? 21 years, and he's brought the program up from the A level, winning a championship, also losing a championship, double A level, and now the AAA, another AAA championship for Rich Bielan and the Cardinals. And that guy right there, Rich Bielan, should really take a lot of pride in holding that trophy here today. He's only a junior, so he's going to be back next year as you see him eating a W. But, boy, what a tremendous performance by those guys, especially number three out there. One of the best quarterbacks I've had the privilege of watching at the high school level. And I think C.J. O'Neill will be the first to tell you he's not in this position without Rich Bielan today. I think Jared Veluzzi has finally caught up. Uh, to Rich Bielan. Are we ready to? No, not quite yet. I think they've got to actually go through the handshake line. 
And that's what they're doing, finally. And you know what? That's such a classy show of respect for both programs, all right? Iona easily uh, could have just left at this point. Uh, why wait around, right? But uh, you can see the two uh, programs here uh, making sure you, you end it in the right way. There's a great deal of respect. This game was played uh, in a very physical, sometimes violent way, but uh, a great deal of respect between these two programs. No doubt, and ultimately that's what this league is all about. Uh, you know, there's fierce competition, there's hated rivals, but at the end of the day, we're all coming together, we're all New Yorkers, we're all playing this great Catholic league, and really the, the purpose of being out here is not just to have fun and play football, but it's to develop better men for New York's future, and I think we're in really good hands when you look around at the Catholic High School Football League and see some of the coaching that these kids are getting and knowing that, you know, the next generation is in really great hands. And in great hands right now is the championship trophy. It is in Rich Beeland's hands, and I'm not sure he's ready to give that up anytime soon. It is a shared trophy. It's a trophy that should be in the halls at Cardinal Hayes, but maybe Rich Beeland has other plans <laughs> for it. <laughs> He's like, listen, we'll have it at the house in Harlem. Uh, no problem. You can come by anytime. As you see, the handshake line continuing. Looks like our team has finally gotten a hold of the most famous man in the room right now, Rich Bielan. Oh, I thought that was Jared Veluzzi you were saying. We'll send it down to the field now where Jared Veluzzi has Rich Beelan. Rich, it's just over a minute left. Ball's in your hands. You make an incredible throw to Cleveland Charlton. What was going through your mind on that game-winning play? I had two fumbles. I had two fumbles this game. My team continued to have my back. Number 22, Kenneth Antoine, is a monster. And he got in that zone for us twice, which was huge. Um, Tyrone Smith had that big pick six. It was just 22 guys on offense and defense just pouring in and just pouring out their hearts on that field. And that's, that's why that scoreboard looks the way it does. And that's why we were able to leave here with a, with a win. And Cleveland Charlton went up there and got there, just took that ball right out the air. Scored. <laughs> and last year, you guys went 2-8. and eight. It was a down season. People counted you out. But now... Triple A champs. How are you guys able to do it? Belief. You gotta have belief. You gotta have faith. I pray. I pray every day. Pray for these games. Stay safe. To be healthy, and to be able to play to the best of my ability. And I just thank God for what we were able to do today. And two and eight, man. Two and eight last season. Everyone counted us out, and we're here now. And man, you're a champion. How's it feel? Feels, it, it honestly hasn't really set in yet. I think it will set in soon. This is just unreal right now. It's unreal. Thank you, Rich. Go celebrate with your team. Great stuff, Jared, and congratulations uh, to Rich Beelan as the dance party continues <laughs> on the field. Eventually, I think they'll try to turn the lights out here at Fordham <laughs> University. It might be a couple hours. It might be a few hours. Uh, what a moment for Cardinal Hayes. Again, congratulations to C.J. O'Neill and his entire coaching staff as Cardinal Hayes are your AAA champions for a third time in school history. That will do it from a long morning into evening here in the Bronx, what a tremendous championship triple header here at Fordham University. We want to thank our entire Varsity Media crew, our executive producer, Ben Turchin, 
our technical director, Chris Sweeney, Travis DeLuise, Dan Acevedo, and Matt McCower brown bringing you all those dramatic moving images for Jared Veluzzi on our sideline. From Pat Godfrey, my partner next to me, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us from Fordham. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Varsity Media.